crying again. Hi guys, welcome back to the Book of Shields podcast. I am your host, Sydney. So this is a very special podcast episode. Not only is this a podcast, it is also a YouTube video. So you guys can go and watch it as well as listen listen to it. So I will put that link down in the description below. And feel free to comment in that YouTube comment section because I thought that would be a great opportunity for everyone to interact there. But I am also joined by my dear friend and <laughs> um, fair warning there's a lot of screaming so the pitch goes up a little bit so I'd advise to keep it at a nice volume not too high but not too low but I thought I should warn you guys about that so yeah anyway enjoy I am joined by a guest Hello. What is your name? I don't know. <laughs> Tyler. Hello. I'm Tyler. It's we her are. fault. Yeah. <laughs> I got her into Captive Prince, so now she's here. It's 100% her fault. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, d- I mean, it's good, but, yeah. like, it's your fault. <laughs> but yeah. Oh. Now I have someone to talk about it with. We have been so... We have been so... Good. <laughs> yeah, we haven't talked about it yes. since we have never talked about it. I don't we think. brief. I think we like as I finished the first two books, we kind of talked about it. But then you're like, no, we're not talking about Kings Rising. Yeah, no, <laughs> we can't. You have to wait for the podcast. Mm-hmm. So what? It's been like three months. Yeah, <laughs> and that is why it's taken so long. Yes, so. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm no. not even a slow reader. I just have I'm reading like seven books at the moment. So that's the life. That's the life. No, to be fair, I was... Because I'd, I'd only finished rereading King's Rising in late November. Because mm. you had finished it, but you were doing auditions at... Oh, not auditions. Theatre. Shows. But yeah. No, I was the one who was late. <laughs> <laughs> and then Christmas came around. Yeah. And it was like, no one's going to be able to see anyone. No. Nope. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, okay, quickly, I just have to say... Shout out to Greenwood, Deandra, and Maria. Thank you for reaching out to me. I got your emails slash messages. So that was really cool to see. Yay. Now, into King's Rising. Where we left off, Damianos has entered the fort. <laughs> he is no longer Damon. He is Damianos, well and true. Mm-hmm. Um, now his fellow Achaeans and him hold the fort, and we start off with this tension of how Damon is going to face Laurent. Yes. Because at this time, you all know, but I won't say it in case you don't. <laughs> you you'll know. Spoilers, yes. Spoiler yeah. warning. <laughs> oh yeah. It's and that one spoiler that I won't mention, but. It's amazing how, like, one small detail changed just, everything. It literally changed everything. And that's, like, good writing. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like, it's so simple. It's, and the thing is, as well, like, it's a plot twist, but it's a good one because mm. it's, like, littered through that it would make sense. Yeah. So, good writing. Yeah. That's what matters. Really good writing. Mm. Good on you, Picard. Like, I feel like doing something... I know, like, how people do, like, elaborate things but mm. honestly sometimes simple things it's all it's like it's the best yeah <laughs> literally and it's hard to pull off mm. oh yeah i remember when i was reading it the first time i genuinely didn't i didn't know what to expect because at that moment of time i couldn't i still didn't know exactly what laurent was doing and so i couldn't guess yeah i, I feel like no one knows what laurent's doing yeah <laughs> not even laurent not even laurent <laughs> He's just, he acts like he has it all together, but yeah. really it's just like, uh, sheer luck. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> he just plays dirty, that's all. He does. Which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> but Nicandros and Damon have a moment to catch up on everything, including what happened after Damianos presumably, presumably died. died. So it's very, like... He's basically telling him all that happened 
after he died. Yeah, he and died, how, and how Castor has run things, and how he affected everything. Mm, yeah, <laughs> by being a really good king. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> But he gives an old note to Damon, which was written to Nicandros from Laurent. Mm. So Laurent's been trying to get Nicandros' backing since book one. Because if you remember, yeah. he says, do you think the Kairos of, of Delpha would like me? Yes! Mm. That one-off question. You think <laughs> at the time he's like teasing him? Yeah, because that's very Laurent, mm. but he's actually like, no. No. <laughs> Mm, I'm actually asking you questions here. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. Mm. Again, it's like you look back at things, you're like, oh shit, that's what he was doing. That makes sense now. <laughs> mm. Also, when you think about that, he's been planning this... He's been planning this since book one. Mm. Like, Laurent's always had some kind of direction he was going yes. in. It's some type of... It, it's a brain that works with chess. Yes, <laughs> literally. It, you can like continue just to play moves mm-hmm. until the other person's like, "Oh, I was backed into a corner and had no idea how this happened." Yeah. I uh, except the problem is he's playing against the regent, <laughs> who literally I just said his name and I just felt like I got so tense. I just felt so angry. <laughs> he's gotten away with so much shit. <laughs> Bitch, it's time to knock him down. Anyway, also, Nicandros sees the cuff as Macedon and a few other soldiers enter the hall. They're all horrified mm-hmm. because this is a great insult and humiliation to Achilles' country. Yes. But this is a thematic moment because Damon's like, no. It's how- mine. Yeah. yeah, it's mine. <laughs> he's like, how dare you? I'm not hiding it. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, you don't understand. And he's like, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> David understands what it would do to the country, but they don't understand what it does to him. Yeah. And that is just something else. Well, when you also think about it, it's like... Well, because no one knows about, like, Damon and Laurent at this yeah. time. They're like, oh, the Prince just... of Veer. Yeah. <laughs> you, he was, you were his slave. <laughs> yeah. How this cannot happen. Yeah, and he's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's like you would never understand because you never were there. Yeah. And you weren't with us. you weren't there during the times he was alone with me. Which is fair. <laughs> and thus we head off to Chelsea. Aww. And Laurent doesn't show up. Mm. I was so pissed off the first time I read it because I was always wondering whether or not he was genuinely going to keep his word. Because yeah. you don't know who he is. No. You really no. don't know who he is. Because you see him through Damon's perspective. Yeah. So that's like. You think, just when you think you know him, you don't. Yeah, no, so. exactly, it's how it runs. Yeah. But I I kind of, like, in my head when I first read it, I was kind of like, in, I was like wishing that something had happened just because, I, like, I was like, he wouldn't do that. Like, as much as he's a dick, mm. I don't know how much he'd go back on his word. Yeah. Which is also what Damon was thinking, besides the anger. Mm. But, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's just how it works out. Mm-hmm. I still wonder. Like, I still have theories. I'm like, did Laurent plan to get captured? That's, that's my other theory. That's a thought. That is, that a, is thought. a thought. Because cause... he would do that. If you tell Damon one thing to keep him safe or something. Yeah. But the then... true enemies to lovers mm, fashion. Literally. <laughs> And also, we get Laurent's POV for the first time. I know. And I loved it. That, that's something I love about this book, is that you see bo- both of their perspectives. Yeah. It's, it's just been through Damon's eyes, mm. which has been great, but it's, it's mm. interesting to see it through somebody else's. Oh, yeah. And, like, Laurent's the number one thing you're, you're curious about, because mm-hmm. it's like, how the fuck does your mind work? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and honestly, like, when you think about it, if the entire series had been from Laurent's point of view, it wouldn't... I don't think it would have worked because, well, no. you know, straight away. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't have been as gripping, which no. I think it's really good to actually add his point of view to kind of help clue the reader in yeah. as to what has been happening the past two books. Mm. Like Literally. Instead of just sitting there like Damon and being like, I am confused. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm a fish out of water. <laughs> yeah. uh, it turns out Laurent's stuck in a cell tied to a chair with Govar, mm. who we haven't seen since we threw his ass out of captaincy in book two. Little fish fucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I absolutely loved being inside Laurent's head because his perspective is so distinct from Damon's too. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I find yeah. books with multiple perspectives, they either su- succeed at or they don't. Yeah. And I think this book did really well at changing, like, the tone that Damon had versus Laurent, Mm. who, like, was very thoughtful in everything that he did. Like, even though, like, I remember in the fight when I was rereading it, and it's like, oh, he knew that Govart would block his, like, knife hand, but bitch wouldn't see the chair coming from the other side. (laughs) I love that. That was so. <laughs> that was so spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's like, that also like taps into another element of Laurent because, in Princess Gambit, you see like playful Laurent for the mm-hmm. first time, like in the inn, mm-hmm. and the rooftop chase. <laughs> I love those. He's such a shit in the chase. <laughs> um, but like, him throwing a chair is just <laughs> again. Just so spontaneous. And it's a mood. <laughs> yeah, it's a mood. He's like, I'm going to kill this man. Wait. And he does. Thank fuck. Oh, God. About time, Gova. But... Mm-hmm. Um, but also I noticed in Laurent's point of view, because you see how he thinks, and he's so conscious of subduing his involuntary re- reactions. Mm. And um, it makes him seem way less invincible yeah because he's actually he he's not like oh yes i have no emotions he's yeah. like i have to try and control them yeah like is... he's anticipating what govar's gonna do and he's like don't not don't scream but like don't you react, can, don't react. Yeah. and then you're like oh he really doesn't have it all together <laughs> <laughs> nope he thinks this is the end and he's going through all these fleeting thoughts a flicker of boyish hope that he will be saved. But then he extinguishes it, wondering if there will be any dignity in this situation, and then he realises the only thing he can do is provoke Govar. So what he did in the sword fight yeah. with Govar. Which he likes to do. Which mm-hmm. is fair, because he's a very angry man, so it's easy to provoke an angry person Oh yeah. into a fight where you can keep the upper hand if you don't get angry. Mm-hmm. I and speak from experience. <laughs> Slytherin. <laughs> you and Laurent are Slytherin. <laughs> you have the same NFJ personalities. We do. I, I do. I know. I was like, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> this is why I'm a bitch. <laughs> <sighs> see, I tried to see if my personalities match with any of them, and they don't. So. I'm sorry. Actually, no, it's probably <laughs> the thing. <laughs> That's true. I don't want the same personality as Laurent. <laughs> Laurent also has this little snippet where he predicts that Damon, despite being left for dead by Laurent, will probably probably win the battle yes. against Ridiculous Yes. <laughs> I read that and yeah. I was like, he's not wrong. Mm. <laughs> he's definitely not wrong. He's like, nah, my, my man is big. He can do anything. <laughs> no, just I'm, in the shoulder region. <laughs> Uh, Govar, who is excited to finally one up Laurent, says that the regent warned him of what he would say that he'd lie, wheedle, and suck up to Govar, and that the only way to stop him is to cut his tongue out. Mm-hmm. But then there's this line that caught me off guard. Oh, yeah, now I remember what it was. <laughs> Laurent says, You always wanted to be on the other side of the door, said Laurent, and now you are. That left a sick feeling in my stomach. Mm. I was like, no. <laughs> it's just disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> anyway. But like, you, did, you didn't know that, but like it has such an impact when mm. it's just said all in one line. Yeah. And it's what it implies. It's yeah. not saying anything. It just hurts more. Mm. 
I find the other thing with Picard is that she doesn't go into gratuitous details, even yeah. with those sort of things, as well as scenes that are explicit yeah. in nature. So I think she balanced that out really yeah. well. Long story short, Laurent has a knife in his shoulder, mm-hmm. yet turns the tables by <laughs> putting doubt in Guyon when he shows up, and then kills Govar with a chair. Yeah. Locking them all up in a cell, just... Just tie it up with all with a bow. Just <laughs> so easy. Uh, and even like Laurent, Laurent's like, this is too good to be true. Yeah, he's, he's got a dislocated shoulder and he's like, yeah, I'd be just two guards. It's yeah. Fine. Oh, but then this line, he gets all cunning and powerful with Guyon and he's mm. like, there was a man I was supposed to meet. He's got all these ideas about honour and fair play. And he tries to keep me from doing the wrong thing. But he's not here right now. Unfortunately for you. <laughs> such a bad bitch. Yeah, such a bad bitch. <laughs> and then he proceeds to relay every detail of his capture and how it came about. How? So, oh wait, no. Because it's been a while since I, <laughs> I finished the book. But I think what I meant by that was... Laurent knows... Like, he's two steps ahead of the game, basically. Mm-hmm. He knows everything. It makes my brain hurt. Yeah, I'm mm. a slow brain. It makes my brain hurt. Mm. And now, this is where it gets frustrating. Mm. This is where it gets frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> not the other two books. Yeah. <laughs> because Laurent's not being truthful towards Damon. And this is the part where I'm always screaming at the book. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Veritian Herald gives... Um, the note oh no that's right hang on so this is we're back at the battle of Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Damon's like how dare you Laurent what the fuck is going on but the herald gives Damon the note that Laurent wrote in his like mm. cursive handwriting little bitch <laughs> little bitch <laughs> and it says you have Chelsea, I have fourteen. and I'm like oh <sighs> Then they show up at 14 and see all the untouched tents and silk banners fly in the wind while Damon and his men are barely alive. (laughs) Yeah, I know. After, like, fighting, like, 6,000 men. Yeah. Just like, yeah, it's fine. Look, oh, you were fighting? I was filing my nails. (laughs) Kind of energy. Um, and all riled up, Damon straight up gives no shits and enters Laurent's tent. And then Laurent, the iconic bitch he is, says, Hello, lover. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that line. It's just, you just imagine him being <laughs> such a shit. Like, this... like, just smirking about it or something else. And you're like, I'm angry at you, but <laughs> God, you're amazing. Yeah, I know. It's like there's so many contradicting feelings I'm having, mm-hmm. but it's amazing. <laughs> it's, all, it's all that matters. It's amazing. Yeah. But, like, what's so ironic is that in the context of this scene, right, he's saying hello, lover, and it's the first time he's calling Damon lover. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's in almost, like, a sarcastic way yeah, as well. Like, yeah. And you're like, oh, you fuck. And it's, it's sarcastic in the way that because Laurent is now putting him at a distance, mm-hmm. and you're like, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Laurent goes on saying that they're basically saying that they had nothing special, but yet he knew who Damon was the whole time. Like, Laurent kind of steals Damon's thunder in that moment because mm-hmm. Damon's like, I need to tell you who I am. He's like, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, he's like, I'm going to tell you who I am. Probably worked up so much courage to be like, he's going to hate me. And then he's like, lol, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's so funny because leading up to that moment, I knew. I was mm-hmm. like, this is Laurent Avia. He has to know. Yeah. And so I had that feeling coming, but when it happened, I was like, of course. <laughs> of course. This makes so much sense. <laughs> but yeah, poor Damon's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. There's all this talk that they do, but it's like Laurent saying him being with Damon, it was all tactical, mm. being fucked by my brother's killer was my plan all along, kind of thing. I wanted to flip a table over, because 
for Damon in that moment because he, he was so broken hearted. It, and the, uh, it makes sense as to why he would be angry as well. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. I would be too. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone would be angry. Like, I understand, like, that's not their idea. Like, they don't have, like, the first time idea that mm. like, we have. But, like, even then you think, okay, yeah, I kind of care for someone. And they're like, yeah. haha, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> He just, it's just Laurent giving Damon the bird, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. But, but even then, despite all this, Damon knows deep down Laurent is lying. Yeah. He 100%. knows Laurent to a T. 100%. <laughs> but he's just so fucking frustrated. He's like, I know you're not being truthful. What the fuck happened at Fortane? <laughs> Tell me! And Laurent's like, mm-mm. No. You have to be careful around me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. <laughs> That is Laurent's vibe. Yeah. Oh my god. And also, like, for Laurent to say, because when he says, I know who you are, Damianos, Mm. for him to say Damianos, I feel like that... It would put a hole, like, in his heart. Yeah. Like, he's... He's... um, I think he's, like, been separating the idea of Damian. Damian and Damianos. Yeah. Yeah. That whole idea. He would have to. I feel like it's the only way he copes with it. Because... Um, him saying Damianos makes it too real for him. Yeah. And, because this whole time their relationship has grown, it was hidden by that safe lie. Yeah. This is just Damon. He's yeah. my slave. It's nothing. But now that Damon is Prince Killer, through and through, no going back, Laurent's probably thinking, this is too fucked up. Mm. Mm-mm. I cannot have feelings for this man, <laughs> my enemy. It's not happening. But, and ironically, the regent's greatest weapon. Mm-hmm. Because he... No. No. He knew. He knew. <laughs> they all fucking knew. I'm interested, though, because I think that's in that discussion, or Damon thinks about it, mm. um, about whether the regent, like, they wanted... Laurent to fuck Damon. Yeah. That was like mm. that. But then he also was wondering if Laurent would kill him because mm. he knew pretty much that Laurent would understand and know who it is yeah. and think, okay, my uncle wants me to kill him. Mm. So I'm not going to kill him. <laughs> and, and then the region's probably also thinking, like, but he's not going to want to do it. And because they had a. I know, it's so many mind games. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the emotional repercussions are like coming in full force right mm-hmm. now. So you can't just fuck your brother's killer. No, <laughs> no, I would. I mean, think about it. anyone. No, no one could have ever imagined that. Mm-mm. So, but as this scene goes on, Laurent makes sure that everything goes his way in the negotiation. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I'm not making room, bitch." Da- Damon even says. Why shouldn't I hand you over to your uncle in exchange for his aid against Castor? And Laurent says, because I knew who you were. And when you killed Lord Twa, not Touras, I keep saying <laughs> Touras, apparently it's Twa. <laughs> and humiliated my uncle's faction. I sent the news echoing to every corner of my country. There would be no possibility of an alliance. Do you want to play this game against me? I will take you apart. He would though. He That's would. the thing. He would. he would. I just love that. Like, there are so many iconic lines. Mm-hmm. I want that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to play this game against me? I will take you apart. Just like. Do you want to play this game yeah. against me at the front? I will take you apart at the back. I love it. Someone's walking up past you on the street. <laughs> and just like, tear you apart. And they're like, oh, she's oh, crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yes, they they don't know. They don't need to know. Um, but Laurent's back to his cold self. Mm. So the alliance is struck. Vir will fight alongside Archelaus in exchange for Delphi. Mm-hmm. And then after Damon relays that info to unhappy Nicandros, he finds a slave in his tent. Mm-hmm. But he orders her away, breaking so many protocols. So much has changed. Yes. I mean, that's fair. It would be mm. like so hard to be like, oh, yes, I'm going to have sex with somebody. Who is asleep. When I've had to do... When... Not exactly that. Yeah. didn't really sleep with anyone. No. We don't talk about the first book. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't talk about the first book yet. But, um, no, he's like... Because the whole thing with Damon is like he goes into the, the Baritian court 
thinking slavery is normal. Yeah. And that's his bias. And so he has to realise, oh shit, slavery's not good. And obviously being a slave, he realises that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's a turning point. Mm. But like for Damon, it's a really big thing because like in Prince's Gambit, his whole his whole idealised version of his father, like, that was massive to him. Yeah. And this, he's just questioning everything that he's known. So, again, this is just a big moment for him. Mm-hmm. And the next day, Damon and Laurent meet to sign the treaty. Everyone in the Akeelon camp is gathered together while Damon sits on a throne inside a pavilion with his army in formation. Receiving Laurent and his little faction of Verisians. That's right, because Laurent's like on the losing side, yeah. so he hardly has anyone. Um, but he doesn't act like it. No. Um, but out of nowhere, Laurent gives him a bejeweled golden whip. That is such a like backhand, completely. Like I it's, just imagine that being like a pimp's backhand. Yeah, kind of thing. literally. Like, the tension in that scene is so palpable because Damon knows that Laurent knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. It's also too tenuous because they can't break protocol. No. It's very formal, and like you can't just get out of a scene and be like, "You fucking did." <laughs> And then Laurent flips it on its head, making it a backhanded insult and compliment by revealing the captives who attacked the Akhelon village Mm. by getting whipped. Yeah. So Damon's men can whip him, or Damon also has the chance to whip one of them. Yeah, I think the first 50 were done by By someone else, and then he had to watch that. Yeah. I was like, you made (laughs) shit. I was like, oh... I see what you did there, Laurent. (laughs) You bitch. (laughs) But Damon is prepared to one-up Laurent in this, though. Mm. On page 68... I know exactly what this is. (laughs) The cuff, unmistakably, was the twin to the one Damon wore, altered last night by a blacksmith for Laurent's final wrist. Damon said, wear it for me. For a moment, he thought Laurent wasn't going to do it. But in public, Laurent had no recourse to refusal. Laurent extended his hand and then waited, palm outstretched, his eyes lifting to meet Damon's. Put it on me. (laughs) (laughs) I love how, like, that scene is just... It sounds so simple, Mm -hmm. but you got to read between the lines. (laughs) Ooh, because that, like... Damon's like, right, I've got a better gift for you. I didn't come to this empty handed. Mm-hmm. You have to wear the cuff, bitch. <laughs> <sighs> We're in this together. Mm-hmm. Now you uh, thought you could get rid of me? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> After they sign the treaty, Laurent is gone. Nicandros is straight up mad because now he's seen Laurent and knows what he looks like. Mm-hmm. And. I love, like, how beforehand, it's... He's like, oh, I'm willing to give up Delpha. Mm. But then as soon as he sees Laurent with his blue eyes and blonde hair, he's like, Damon, you're not thinking straight. <laughs> you're just horny. <laughs> it's kind of true. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what happened to you two, but I don't trust <laughs> it. I don't trust it. Oh, and that's right. And Nicandra Sen says, it's natural. Just get him out of your system and vet him already. <laughs> But then he, he, there's this long silence and he realises Damon has already slept with the rod. And the can't trust is devastated. <laughs> he's like, shit, man, shit. he's in love. Poor Nick Andros. Yeah. He's, he's got to be like the therapist. Yeah. Damon. <laughs> Who wants that? He's Damon. like, you bedded every single girl in Akielos with blonde hair. And your cast is literally the blueprint of, of the rod. I know your type. <laughs> <laughs> so Damon and Laurent are no longer friends, mm-hmm. but King's working together very distantly. Complications are rising further for Damon since they plan to do the pledge at Malas. He's feeling very torn about it for obvious reasons because this is Malas. <laughs> <laughs> He's pushing himself each night to train alone and get his mind off Laurent, but then one night 
He finds some Akiyalan soldiers throwing spears at a Varetian boy for Octon practice. Not really, they're, they're just dicks, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they've beaten the boy up and put him in, put an iron cuff on his wrist, mirroring Damon and Laurent's. What I find interesting about this scene is because Damon approaches that whole situation um, in a Varetian way of mm-hmm. approaching problems, because this is what he says. He says, oh no, here's an example. He was angry. The men standing perhaps did not recognise that. They didn't know the slow way that he came forward or the calm tone of his voice. That's very Varetian. Laurent, Laurent is rubbing off on him. Mm-hmm. And because Damon always like stood out amongst Laurent and his men, mm-hmm. I couldn't notice that he had changed that way. So I only realised that when I read it for the second time. Yeah. But... It's the little things. It's it is. the devil in the details. Exactly. <laughs> After Macadon's men leave and are going to be executed for their behaviour, Damon calls out to Macadon on his shit, but he can tell Macadon blames the Varusians for everything, mm-hmm. and he's a stubborn bastard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Damon gets Pascal to treat, treat the boy in the Akiyalan camp to avoid any trouble, and waits outside the tent until he comes out and asks asks how is he and Pascal thinks he's talking about the boy but then he realises he means Laurent <laughs> he can't stop worrying about Laurent <sighs> same mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say he can be told yeah, yeah. <laughs> shortly though they arrive at Malas where Laurent and Damon share adjacent rooms I totally forgot that Laurent is given another slave who is Isander oh and Laurent shows off in front of Damon multiple times. Colnas, I think that's how you say it, the slave keeper is explaining to Laurent what a first night is. Then Laurent lifts his eyes to Damon and has the audacity to say, I never did learn how to command a bed slave, teach me. He's saying this looking right at Damon. It's. it's... <laughs> it's a bitch. He literally says those same words to Damon in Prince's Gambit. That's right. He says them because he says there's that moment um, where he's doing up Laurent's laces. Oh. And he's like, um, yeah, how do you address bed slaves in Akielon or something? Do you remember like... Yeah. Yeah, there is. It's mirroring it. And I'm like... Whoa, forgot. <sighs> Never actually realized that, even though I literally read those two <laughs> right after each other. <laughs> I know, it, it, it's amazing what you find after you, like, reread it, because I would not have been able to mm. to get it the first time, most definitely, but Laurent says for Asanda to kiss his boot, which Damon has also done in the first book. Mm-hmm. And later that night at the meeting of the Bannermen in the hall, Isanda is feeding Laurent grapes while Laurent's twini- twining a finger in his curls and as he's... as if he's his new favourite thing. All the while, Damon just wants to escape into his wine cup. <laughs> okay, there's this weird imbalance now. So Damon's in a difficult position. He's not taking any more slaves, which displeases his people. Mm-hmm. His men are secretly displeased by the alliance with the Varetians. Not a surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Along with the rumours of Laurent and him. But Laurent, on the other hand, is doing a great job at pleasing the Achaeans. Obviously, they aren't trusting of him yet, but he's charming them. He knows what to do. He's giving <laughs> them what they want. The golden whip and the whipping post, perfect example, mm. wearing the gold cuff, respecting the Akiyalan customs. Damon's not getting much in the way of um, affection because everyone is questioning him. Mm-hmm. So the tables have turned in that way. Yeah. But there's also that scene where Jord goes up to Amrick's mother all awkward and says, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for your loss. Your son was a good fighter. Mm. Mm, you don't know that I was his lover. <laughs> that is a whole layer of angst. Mm-hmm. There's this moment where all the men and women in the room are starting to retreat with their slaves to get some privacy. Tri- uh, privacy. 
Laurent follows suit by tapping Lysander on the shoulder, and Damon is instantly jealous mm-hmm. because Torvald's words come to his mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeet. <laughs> he's in a hyper mood. When he does that, I know he's in a hyper mood. Um, that was my cat, by the way, if you're listening to this. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's right. Torvald's words come to Damon's mind. I'd wager you never thought a prince could be jealous of a slave. At this moment, I'd trade places with you in a heartbeat. But it's all good, because Damon finds Isanda standing alone and confused under an archway. So Laurent has gone for a ride, and mm-hmm. Damon knows exactly where to find him. Wow, it's like he knew him for <laughs> so long. <laughs> yeah, oh. we're, we're intimate with each other for Whoa. so long. That's crazy. Mm. I'm just going to read out a little bit of the thing because there's just many feelings. So many feelings. Many feelings. You'll just get the vibes when I read them. But, um, 114. Laurent turned. For a moment, Laurent looked at him wide-eyed, young, and then the look in his eyes changed, as though the universe had fulfilled an... 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 No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Something an inequitable promise. Perfect. Damon said, I thought you might want want. A friend, said Damon. He used George's words. His chest felt tight. If you'd prefer me to leave, I will. Why cavil, said Laurent. Let's fuck. <laughs> He said it with his shirt unlaced, the wind teasing the the opening there. They faced each other. That isn't what I meant. It might not be what you meant, but it's what you want, said Laurent. You want to... (laughs) Oh, he's laying it on thick. Anyone else would have been drunk. Laurent was dangerously sober. Damon remembered the feel of a palm against his chest, pushing him back on the bed. You've been thinking about it since Ravenel, since Nesson. He knew this mood. <laughs> he should have he should have expected it. He made himself say the words. I came because I thought you might want to talk. Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a bitch. <laughs> like <laughs> We will say it a thousand times, Laurent's just such a bitch. <laughs> um He said about your brother. Laurent said, I never fucked my brother, said Laurent with a strange <laughs> edge to the <laughs> with a strange edge to the words that is incest. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Cause that's right, because it's rumoured that Laurent fucked and it. Yeah. yeah, they that they fucked, but obviously not. Damon says You're right. I've been thinking about it since Ravnell. I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Why, said Laurent, was I that good? <laughs> no, you fucked like a virgin, said Damon. Half the time, the rest of the time, like I knew what I would what to do. <laughs> like you knew what you were used to. He saw the words impact. Laurent swayed, like he'd been dealt a blow. Laurent said, I'm not certain I can take your particular brand of honesty just at this time. Damon said, I don't prefer sophistication in bed, if you were wondering. <laughs> they are throwing it back. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Um, they're both angry. <laughs> they're both angry. And sexually tense. Yeah. Oh, my God. Laurent says, that's right. You like it simple. Uh, this is why we cry. Oh, my God. It's just too much. But it's amazing. <laughs> Damon, like, changes the subject, and he's like, he died well. He fought better than any man I've known. It was a fair fight, and he felt no pain. The end was quick. Like gutting a pig. Um, Damon felt like he was reeling. And then Laurent says, you sent your men out to look for me too? No. A bunch of rioters mm. come and ruin the moment, and now they're like, oh shit. We gotta go. Oh, oh, shit. But along with those riders, they they were wearing the notched belt of Macadon. Which is always a problem. Yeah. 
Um, they destroy a village in Damianos' name. Damon is so blinded by rage that he doesn't guess that someone else is framing to look mm. like Macedon. But then, ironically, Laurent saves Macedon. Because, mm. like, you're not thinking straight. <laughs> I know this. It's interesting. Yeah. Because it's a very, like, veer thing to do. Mm. To dress up as somebody else. Yeah. To get your point across. Very similitude yeah. to look like something but be something else. Damon sees things and he's like, this is what they are. Mm-hmm. Which is not how the world is. Mm. Macadon's so confused because he's like, you're saving me? <laughs> and then Laurent's like, if it were left to me, you'd be dead. <laughs> your blunders play into my uncle's hands. I saved your life because this alliance needs you. And I need this alliance to overthrow my uncle. And there's this moment where Damon's looking out over the, the charred fields of the mm. village that the riders destroyed. And he can hear footsteps coming up behind him, and his mind is anticipating for it to be Laurent when it's just Nick and Nick Andros. Hey, do you ever think he's your boyfriend, but it's actually just your best friend? <sighs> because he wanted to say, "I always thought I knew what it felt like to fight your uncle, but I didn't. I didn't until today. It was never me he was fighting. That's what he's thinking about saying, but he can't say it." With that, it's just so much more personal. Because yeah. now he can see, oh shit, I have to fight the regent. It's not just the wrong. Yeah. Because now he's throwing shit at me. He's throwing me under the bus with him. Yep. So now... But I can't imagine Damon not fighting Oh, no. Regent. <laughs> no. He's... He, he wants to kill the regent. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, everyone <laughs> wants to kill the regent. Um, oh... The sword fight scene. (laughs) Let's talk about it. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, I was like... (laughs) You you were just composing yourself. It didn't work well. (laughs) Okay, let's just step back from the book for a sec. Mm -hmm. Because I have this all written down. Mm. Um, I've never read a fight scene that's so heavy on the subtext Mm -hmm. of what's happening and what I mean by that is all the emotional beats we are hitting throughout the scene aren't from the physical act of sword fighting it's from Damon being upset for being framed thinking back to being tugged on the chain by Laurent Mm. under the lash Laurent putting up that cool unbreakable facade in the beginning of the sword fight his teasing and evading of Damon's attacks. Damon heard his own voice, thick and heavy. You, you want me to put you on your back in the dirt? You think you can? <laughs> put down the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a moment where you just go, I need to breathe. Yeah, I just need to release all my pent up energy. <laughs> it's written really well. A lot of the time for action scenes, I find myself skimming over them, which is not good when yeah. you're writing a book that has action in it. Exactly. So I need to get better. But that was one that I actually sat and read and then was like, I need to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> like, Picard did that so well. If there's yeah. one thing she does, she can, again, it's it's the subtext. Mm-hmm. It's what is reading between the lines. Mm-hmm. And, oh god, she's just so good with the tension. She uh, is. She, she, like, obviously you have to be if you're going to hold it for three books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the melodrama. It's, like, yes. high melodrama. It's a soap opera. It's a soap opera. <laughs> I often compare this with Romeo and Juliet, except they are actually enemies. Yeah. Because when you think about it, like, Romeo and Juliet, like, they're just on opposite sides. Yeah. That's it. But... And their parents are all dicks, so I... Yeah. (laughs) But, I mean, same with these ones. Yeah. But, wow, we are actually enemies, and... Yeah. (laughs) They have, like, a reason to hate each other. Yeah. Whereas, like, uh, that's the problem, like, with some enemies to lovers, there's no reason that Mm. they hate each other, but now it's like, oh, yeah, he he killed his brother, so... I hate him, too. Yeah. Like, because now I look at all the other books that I see in, like, YA or younger, new adult, sorry. Mm. Um, And, like, you could definitely label them as enemies to lovers, but Mm. to what extent? Yeah. Like. If it's 50 pages of them being enemies mm. and then, like, 100 pages of them being lovers, then it's kind of like. Eh. 
are you really hate enemies in yeah. or are you just not friends yeah. Like, yeah it's more like hate to love mm-hmm. like I feel like that's always a distinction with it yeah and um yeah, this, this series has, like, ruined me for enemies to love. Because I'm like, are they enemies, though? No? Like, yeah. actual enemies. <laughs> they're, they're, they're enemies. Yeah. Like, they want to kill each other. Yeah. And I mean, for good reason. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway. Um, oh, no. I was going to say, because it's so high melodrama, hmm. I find it so easy to picture this entire series as, like... Like a musical or a ballet. Yes! <laughs> Just imagine it. Like Bridget and Musical on TikTok, we're doing a Captive Prince musical on yeah. TikTok. Look, I've thought about it. I like, just don't have the musical skills for it. I know. I literally, I like imagine it, and I'm like, this would, this could work. This could. It's high melodrama, and I, I think, ima- like, I imagine, like, especially for the first one, you mm. look like such a whore, and then there's like a musical sting, and like, like a. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Literally, and it's... I always think of, um... You know the song Agony? Yes! <laughs> I'm thinking of that, but it's like back in Prince's Gambit with Damon and Jord on the field, and it's just after Jord has... <laughs> 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 has discovered who Damianos is, and, like, Damon is so guilt-tripped because now he feels like a bad guy, and, like... <laughs> And Joel's like, I have to keep this to myself. <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine them being in so much agony. It's like that same melodrama in yeah. agony. <laughs> it could it could work so well. It could. But as a musical it could. It could. It as could. a ballet it could. Oh, I wanna honestly, see. Ballets are so dramatic. They I would are. love that. And it's all about the expression and Laurent is all body language. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Honestly, he'd be so good in a ballet. I feel like if it was in a musical, he had he'd had like very little songs and mm. not solo songs mm. to kind of add to like. No one knows what the hell he's doing, yeah. so like Damien would have like five solo songs, yeah. and not Damien. Damien would have like five solo songs, and then like maybe Nikkei has like a little like reprise somewhere from like something that Lavron has sung earlier. Like no. Uh. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's so easy to see it that way. Mm-hmm. As a, as a lot you, would have to be taken out, especially oh, yeah. the uh, the rape scenes. Yeah, that would <laughs> that would have to be taken out. But um, yeah, it's very soap opery, as mm-hmm. you said, and yeah, I I just like thinking that because like I imagine like seeing Laurent in a ballet, he'd be so beautiful. <laughs> Can't do it, please. <laughs> do it, please. someone. The Royal <laughs> Opera House, please do it. You're missing out on a great story. I want to hear them. I want to hear Damon belt out his his mm. emotions. <laughs> oh, that would be such a good song. It would be. That would it's, be. It's just I could imagine it. It'd be so cathartic. I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the sword fight scene. Yes. As I was saying, it's all about the subtext and. Um, I'm sorry now. I'm just like constantly thinking about a <laughs> different musical. And I'm like, oh, I, this guy would actually play go really well. And I was like, this is not the time. Don't worry, you can think about it all you want. We can do that later. Yeah. <laughs> Damon's no longer feeling careful and is giving it all he's got. But Laurent's drawing him up the end of, of the training arena, being all smug and saying how he thought he would push, he would be pushed much harder. But then Damon successfully makes Laurent stagger backwards and he says, you mean like that? <laughs> and Laurent's eyes narrow and new weariness in his posture. I thought I'd let you go up and down a few times, said Damon, before I take you. I thought you were down here because you couldn't take me. <laughs> it's interesting now to see, like, even Damon isn't on the same footing as Laurent, but they're almost on the same footing mm. whereas the past two books we've seen a power imbalance yes it's now really cool to see Damon thinking like a soldier and yeah. a warrior and mm-hmm. like that's the thing like at Chasi you see the extent of it like you see it briefly in the he- past books his like warrior side but then you think of Chasi they killed so many men mm. and his own men were like who the fuck is this like <laughs> what the fuck what are we what are we fighting for yeah. so and 
so it's like crazy to see them on like the same footing and i feel like that sword fight as well just oh, yeah. adds to it as well oh, yes. cuz i don't think he would have been able to properly do something like that while he was a slave Mm-mm. like so it's just mm, good writing it's, subtext it's <laughs> yep it's the cherry on top of the cake mm-hmm. and like as you said like I noticed that the fandom really likes to label Damon as this dumb brute, and it's like, my man is a tactical genius! I, the way I look at it, I definitely see, because I love Greek mythology and stuff mm. like that, and it's not mythology, but like, Spartans and Athenians, that yeah. is how I see... Damon. Yeah, Damon and Laurent, they're very, like, the separate things, mm. and it doesn't help as well. Laurent's colour is blue, yeah. Damon's is red, and yeah. I'm like, okay, this is just adding to it. But And, like, you know, the opposing sides as well. The Spartans, they fought a lot, but they were smart. Oh, yeah. Like, they had tactical people mm. that worked. Like, Damon is a very smart person. Mm. He taught a bunch of mercenaries how to fight. Yeah. In a group. Yeah. That whole Prince's that, Gambit. Yeah, that is a hard thing to do. That's not easy. So, like, I think to just kind of put him off as this dumb idiot that just is following Laurent around like a puppy. Mm. Last part's true, but he's he's smart, just yeah. not with his emotions. Yeah. And I and I think it's so refreshing because I have never read characters like Damon and Laurent before mm. because the one thing that... Well, you usually think of, like, archetypes, right? Mm-hmm. And... Damon, you know, appearance-wise, he's strong and big, can literally kill someone. Big strong boy. Yeah, <laughs> can, kill, can kill someone in two seconds, kind of guy. And, but he's also he's just a big softy. Yeah. But he's also a tactical genius. Like he yeah. has, he has not flaws. Well, he has flaws because he's biased in the beginning. Mm. But, um. There's more to him than being this big, bad, like, I don't need big, anyone. Big, rough and tough Big, rough guy, and tough guy that yeah. doesn't need anyone. Like, that's the usual archetype you'd see. Yeah, instead, he's... He needs people. He I feel like that's something that actually shows in his character. He's mm. not like, oh, I don't need anyone. He's like, I need love and affection, <laughs> please. Yeah. And hey. Laurent's kind of the opposite. He's like, I am amazing. I don't need anyone. <laughs> And then on the inside, he's like, oh, shit, I'm so lonely. <laughs> Which, I mean, same. Yeah, same. Laurent is really interesting for me because mm-hmm. I can relate to both characters. Same, here. Yeah. But Laurent, who's like, I don't need anything, I'm fine, but crying on the inside, I was like, oh, wow. shit, that me. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm. I, yeah, especially with Laurent's character because, like, as I said to you, like, a while ago, I didn't realise how... Because Laurent seems like he's the frigid cast iron mm. bitch of beer. No one can fuck him. Um, Except himself. <laughs> he's gonna fuck himself over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but he... Like, in terms of... Like, I relate to how he feels feels about physical intimacy. Like, mm-hmm. he's like... It takes time. <laughs> it like, takes I time. have to trust you. Yeah. Like, I'm not someone who could do one night stands. No. In that respect, I'm in the middle. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, sex seems pretty cool, but I'm also kind of like... Eh. Yeah. <laughs> sex is great, but... Like, have... who knows my body the best? <laughs> Me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um... No shade to anyone who has... No, God no. People that are like sex workers, fucking power yeah. too. Powerhouses, man. Could never. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine how taxing that must be. Oh, God, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, that is how I related to it. Like, I'm surprised as to how much I related to mm. Laurent Le- Le- and Damon, as you said. Yeah, it's it's really surprising. Like, I very much... I share the same fucking... Myers Briggs stuff <laughs> as Laurent, but I'm also like, yeah, Damien, I can get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Back to the sword fight. Um, so it's very tenuous because they can't fuck. <laughs> and then in the climax of it, the mood has changed because Laurent is straight up trying to kill Damon. Yes. <laughs> and like, because beforehand he's just like, you know, Playful leading him on. fighting. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, no, I'm going to kill this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> He's losing the fight, literally, literally fl- uh, fl- throwing everything in the setting to hinder Damon, and then they're like, 
pinned against the wall and Laurent's just fighting with pure animal struggle. About to kill, about to drive a knife into Damon's side when Damon knocks his wrist against the wall and disarms him. But then they're on the floor and Damon's coming down from, from the high and is like, that's enough. But Laurent just won't quit. And begrudge, she finally yields. Because in hindsight, this is between Laurent and Prince Killer. Yeah, like, it's not his slave. Mm-hmm. It's, haha, you're the guy that killed my brother. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also him finally... I I always am interested in when he stops separating them. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing that I question. he's... The, or does he just keep them separate for the rest of his life and refuses to think of them as the same person? Yeah. Because I know if I fell in love with someone that killed my sister, yeah. who I love very dearly, probably to the same extent that Laurent loves... Mm. Oh, this, so yeah. I was like... If someone did that to my sister and I fell in love with them, I would hate myself <laughs> so much. I would be a mess. And so, like, I would want to keep the idea of them separate. So oh, yeah. it's a question of whether he does or mm. not. Exactly. And um, Damon then says, I want you to know that I could have done this any time when I was a slave. Laurent um, is the first to deliver himself off the floor. He stood with his hand on the post for support. Flecks of sawdust were clinging clinging to his back. You want me to say it? They could never have beaten you? Laurent's voice twisted up. I could never have beaten you. No, you couldn't have. You're not good enough. You would have come for revenge and I would have killed you. That's how it would have been between us. Is that what you would have wanted? Yes, said Laurent. He was everything I had. The words hung between them. I know, said Laurent, that I was never good enough. Damon said, neither was your brother. You're wrong, he was, what, better than I am. He would have, Laurent cut himself off. He pressed his eyes closed with a breath of something like laughter. Stopped you. He said it as though he would. he could hear the ludicrousness of it. Damon picked up the discarded knife, and when Laurent's eyes opened, he put it to, he put it in Laurent's hand, braced it, drew it to his own abdomen, so that they stood in a familiar posture. Laurent's back was to the post. Stop me! <laughs> what is it with this knife, homie? <laughs> uh, is it a euphemism? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but oh my god, they did that in. I think they did that, but it was the opposite in the beginning of Princess Gambit. Yeah, Gambit. because he's, he was like, bitch, kill me. Yeah. And Cause Damon was like, no. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because Laurent was saying, um, do you think I'm the type to scream? And he's holding the knife yes, to him. Yes. And, and Damon's like, you underestimate how much I want to. Yes. And then Laurent's like... Pretty much I, egging him on yeah, to do it. Yeah. He's like... I know exactly what it is to want to kill a man and wait. <laughs> and that's yeah. so ironic because he knows. He does know. That's the thing. He's literally waiting. <laughs> literally. And that, that makes me scream too because it's just like so much. In the next chapter, we get the games. Palace is smashing through, winning short sword and javelin, and then gets the honour of challenging his king, Damon, to wrestle naked. <laughs> Isn't that an honour? Yeah. <laughs> I like to see Damon naked. Everyone wants to see him. The whole crowd cheers when they when they see Damon naked and Laurent's like, oh my fuck. <laughs> don't show, don't show. <laughs> that one moment where he's he wants to scream, I fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But, like, it's the, it's the whole way it plays out. Because, mm-hmm. like, I just found it so funny. Because Damon literally gets up and unpins his his chitin. Like, it's so normal just to present himself naked to the, to his whole congregation yeah, of people. it's not like it's just one, like, bed slave or something. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, yes, here. Yeah. <laughs> here is my penis. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like Laurent wouldn't wouldn't have been anticipating that either, because he's like, you know... Especially own... because he saw... He wasn't a prude mm. in B. He was mm-hmm. just very like, I don't really want to sexually touch anyone no. here. No. So he's probably like, 
How, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, He's like, hold up a minute. Damon never used to do this. Yeah. Oh no, and that's right. Because in this specific section, you you're not told about what Laurent's doing. No. It's just Damon fighting <laughs> Bellas, and then um, until Damon gets back up and he says good fight, and he takes his place next to Laurent. He waves over some wine and asks, what is it? Nothing, said Laurent, and found somewhere else to put his eyes, and internally I just imagine Laurent screaming, you hot piece of <laughs> <art!"> <laughs> Oh my god! How dare you tease me, you tease me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> it's naughty naughty boy. <laughs> I'm good. It would definitely be like if I look at his, if I look at him, I'm gonna look down. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, he treat me so good, I don't want to look. <laughs> I can't look. <laughs> it's like oh. that, that thing that you did for like the, when the characters walk in on each other. That's kind of like, what it's like a, yeah. I want to look, but, oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> my like, pride. <laughs> my pride is in the way. Mm. And not only that, but McAndros suddenly drags Damon into a tent. Mm-hmm. At the last second, pissed off at the scarring all over his back. And just as Nicandros is asking, who did this to you, Laurent enters with, I did. <laughs> He's such a dramatic <laughs> bitch. He is. He's, He's like, such a dramatic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining that tick. I've heard this TikTok song and it's like, it starts off like, I did. What you gonna do, do about, about it? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Added. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I've got tears in my eyes. <laughs> uh, okay, hang on. Wait, where's the? I've got to find the page. 145. I will read this out. Nick Andrews, who did this to you? I did. <laughs> said Laurent. Damon turned. Laurent stood in the entryway of the tent. He was arranged with elegant grace and his lazy blue-eyed attention was all on Nicandros. Laurent said, I meant to kill him, but my uncle wouldn't let me. Nicandros took an important step forward, but Damon had a restraining hand on his arm. Nicandros' hand had gone to the hilt of his sword. His eyes were on Laurent furiously. Laurent said, he sucked my cock too. Nicandra said, exalted, I beg permission to challenge the Prince of Veer to a deal of honour for the insult that he has done to you. Denied, said Damon. You see, said Laurent, he has forgiven me for the small matter of the whip. I have forgiven him for the small matter of killing my brother. Oh, praise the Alliance. He's such a bitch. <laughs> Oh, oh this man. I know, but the fact that he said he sucked my cock too. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine the way he said he sucked my cock too. It's <laughs> just nonchalant. Like yeah. the important part was I gave him a lash. In. Yeah. But he also sucked my dick. Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's chill. That's that chill. Oh. But you know he does it for a response. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> Cause you know what's gonna suck more for them? <laughs> Their prince sucking somebody else's dick. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, oh, that's right. Nick Andrews replies, you flayed the skin from his back. Not personally. I just watched while I had my man do it. Laurent said it with a, fr- a fronded, long-lashed gaze. Nick Andrews looked physically sick with the effort of repressing his anger. How many lashes was it? Fifty? One hundred? Might have di- he oh no he might have died. Laurent said yes that was the idea. <laughs> That's enough said Damon catching the candles as he stepped forward again and then leave us now now Nicandros. Angry as he was Nicandros wouldn't disobey a direct order. His training was too deeply ingrained. Damon stood in front of Laurent with all- most of his clothing bunched in his hand. Why would you do that? He'll deflect. Defect. He's not going to defect. He is your most loyal servant. So you will punish him to breaking point. 
should I have told him I didn't enjoy it, said <laughs> Laurent, but I did enjoy it. I liked it most near the end when you broke down. <laughs> Before throw. Yep. <laughs> Reptile brain says throw. <laughs> My makeup's gonna be so red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're watching this, you can see. She's crying. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> we've had to repair our makeup multiple times. Well, she has, but I now I will. <laughs> oh. Me, me was mess. <laughs> Monkey brain says me was me. <laughs> monkey, 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 monkey brain. Uh, anyway. Thanks, Laurent. <laughs> such a bitch. It's such a bitch. <laughs> but it's so good. Oh, that's right. And then... <laughs> then Laurent completely denies the fact that he came to collect Damon because Nick Andros was looking a little bit too aggressive back there. But Damon knows and says, you could have sent a messenger. But anyway, when they get back to the arena and Mechadon and his men finally show up, striking a deal that he will pledge to fight at Carthus only if Laurent participates in the Octon. <laughs> and to everyone's surpri- surprise, he does. And I remember getting so tense because I was like, I just don't see Laurent winning this. <laughs> see, I, um, I kind of went, I could see him winning. Mm-hmm. Just because he went up against... Gogar. True. And won. True. Like, his his thing when he's fighting is make the other person angry, because when you're angry, you don't think. Yeah. So you're more likely to mess up, especially mm-hmm. if you're in a sword fight. Mm-hmm. So he's very smart about that way. That's why I was like, he's going to use tact and try, because it's what he does with Damon. It is. He riles him up, and then he's like, I will win. It didn't work last time, though. But I did think, I was like, but I think that's because Damon's like, oh, this is how it works. Yeah. So yeah. It's fine, I'll just not do that. Mm. Whereas, Macadon doesn't know how it no. works. So, Ooh. that's why I was kind of like, yeah, I think he could win it. Yeah, I mean, like, I was, I was kind of like, I was like, leaving it up in the air, but I wasn't, I just couldn't overall see how mm-hmm. it would turn out. So, I was thinking, I don't know how he's going to win, but... He can't get hurt. Mm. <laughs> but then you get these. I, I don't I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Oh yeah, because it gets so tense because mm-hmm. what happens is not only is Laurent in the line of fire, but then Pallas's spear is aimed right at Damon because mm-hmm. someone fucks up. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, because they're doing the, the the circuit. Yeah. And then it's like, oh shit, how is he gonna do it? But then Laurent jumps from his horse and knocks the guy down. Yeah. And they're both saved. And I was like... And then, then it just says pandemonium. Mm-hmm. Pandemonium. And now now Laurent has everyone on his yeah. side. <laughs> like, that's how you win. That and press. So. And press, exactly. Hmm. Exactly. But later that night, in the heat of celebration, Macadon approaches Laurent lounging back on a couch and the whole room goes silent as Macadon says you have the mind of a snake he does Laurent says you have the mind of an old bull (laughs) he does (laughs) (laughs) and then of course Macadon proceeds to warm up to Laurent by getting drunk on Grieva I love that (laughs) and after everyone leaves Damon literally sees Laurent loosen up because he's drunk Mm mhm and he admits that he needs help getting back to his room. And I will read from page 150 to 100... No, page 159 to 160. I just want to say it might have been like two months since I finished this book, but I know exactly what this scene is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Many feels. See, now you have to take a breather. All right. Again, this was a book down moment. <laughs> Laurent's asking as he's being carried, helped by Damon. Mm-hmm. Is today the first time you've been beaten in an octon? Because Damon lost. Technically, it was a draw, said Damon. Technically. I told you I was quite good at riding. I used to beat Auguste all the time when we raced at Chastillon. 
It took me until I was nine to realise he was letting me win. I just thought I had a very fast pony. You're smiling. (laughs) He was smiling. They stood in one of the passages. Well, wells of moonlight from the open archway to their left. Am I talking too much? I can't hold alcohol at all. I can see that. It's my fault. I never drink. I should have realised I'd need to with men like these and made of an effort made an effort to build up some sort of tolerance. He was serious. <laughs> Is that how your mind works? said Damon. And what do you mean you never drink? I think you're protesting a little much. You were drunk the first night I met you. I made an exception, said Laurent. <laughs> that night <clears throat> that night. Two and a half bottles. I had to force myself to get it down. I thought it would be easier drunk. You thought what would be easier, said Damon. What? said Laurent. You. Damon felt the hairs over his neck raise. Laurent said it softly as though it was obvious, his blue eyes a little hazy. His arms still around Damon's neck. They they were gazing at one another, halted in the half-light of the passage. My Achillon bed slave, said Laurent, named for the man who killed my brother. Again, it's just things are coming up. The past is alive. Um, Damon drew in a painful breath. It's not much far- further. Oh, and then what he does is he orders no one to be around Laurent in near Laurent's quarters because he knows no one want, he, Laurent doesn't want people to see him like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, God damn it, Damon. You're so cute. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> but what's really bittersweet is that Laurent says, I miss you. I miss our conversations. And Damon says, you're drunk. You're not yourself. I should take you to bed. Then take me. You want to know? And this is the fun thing. I'm just going to hold myself yeah. for like two seconds. <laughs> and you want to know what makes that scene even better? Better? <laughs> the French translation. This is what Damon says. Pardon my French, but I'm gonna butcher it. Tu es Yves, fille remarquée demain. Tu n'es plus toi-même. Je te rêve, te mettre au lit. Mais moi, où tu vous? So apparently, what's so ironic about this translation mm-hmm. is that it can mean two things. Which fit Laurent to a T. Memoir ou tu veux can mean put me wherever you want. Or in a super crude way, it can say fuck me however slash whichever way slash in whichever hole. Because met- metre can mean fuck some in some context. Mm-hmm. So thank you people of Tumblr. You're I a well of knowledge. I, I do remember we in French managed in year eight managed to get our teacher to tell us how to say fucking shit in French (laughs) so (laughs) that was fun yeah I think shit is like um melt melt that's right it sounds like murder yeah (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. but anyway like a good wholesome man Damon helps Laurent into his bed Mm. and Laurent's like you don't like me like this you're and then Damon's like you're really not yourself Aren't I? No. You're going to kill me when you sober up. <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> I tried to kill you. I can't. I can't go through with it. You keep overturning my plans. And it's at this point, I'm like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Is he still talking about Damon? Because um, Damon then like puts a bowl beside his bed and then says... Laurent, sleep it off. In the morning, you can punish us both or forget this ever happened or pretend to. And then just as Damon's, like, leaving, Laurent's like, yes, I'm cool. Have you ever had something just hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That moment did. When I asked, like, oh, is he still, like, referring to Damon? Because he mm. says, you keep overturning my plans. And I'm like... Who are you thinking of? Yeah, I'm like, the regent? Or Damon? 
Either one. Not someone I would like to be compared to. No, but... <laughs> no definitely not. I mean, if that's the only other person he's ever had sexual contact with, mm. then it would make sense as to why his immediate thought would be the man that abused him mm. while he was a child. Yeah. Because he's a pedophile. So. But I love how the next morning, Laurent's described as being a leopard with a headache. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that's so accurate for him once again. And now Macadon's all buddy buddy with him, slapping him on the shoulder, and Laurent literally has no idea how to handle it. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how to handle this physical <laughs> friendship. <laughs> this new camaraderie. He also probably doesn't know how to handle friendship because no one in beer really has friends. No, he doesn't really have a friend. Which is sad. Mm, that is sad. You gotta just constantly keep thinking. What the fuck is this person actually saying? Yeah. Whereas they're all just like, ha ha ha. If I say I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. If I say I'm not going to kill you, I'm not going to kill you. Mm hmm. That's what it's like in Akielos. Mm hmm. Macadon was explaining the virtues of INT to Laurent. And when Laurent massaged his own temple with fine bread, finely bred fingers, Macadon remarked, rising, You should have your fate. Slave, fetch you some. Fetch me some, said Laurent, Damon rose, and stopped. (laughs) Laurent had gone very still. Damon stood there, awkwardly. He could think of no other reason why he had stood up. He looked up and his eyes met those of Nicandros, who was staring at him. Nicandros was with a small group to one side of the table, the last of the men in the hall. He was the only one who had seen and heard. Damon just stood there. This meeting is over, <laughs> the Candros announced. The king is ready to ride. Put the book down. Put the book down. It would be so jarring, though. It would. To go from being a slave to then back to being a prince. And it's so awkward because, like, as I, as I said before, the outside world has no fucking idea. <laughs> Not what <laughs> Laurent and Damon actually are, and they know like it looks horrible, and they're like, oh, and they're like it kind of is, but like uh, uh, things have changed. Yeah, and that's uh. what happens when you're intimate with someone yep. for so long, and that's what happens in good writing. Yes, people change. People change. There's no character. What's the point in writing about them? Exactly. Despite everything that has just occurred in the fetch me some scene Laurent's main concern is whether or not he did anything with Damon the night before Mm. because for obvious reasons and I feel like it's one thing as well for to know someone's killed your brother and not have them admit it but then to have someone admit it and you think you've slept with them then you're kind of like fuck yeah (laughs) he's yeah I knew like like, when the night before happened, I was like, Laurent's not going to be... No, I immediately thought, like, he's going to think they fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's so not ready when Damon says, you really think I take advantage of you mm. in that condition? All you said was that you missed me. And Laurent flushes. A rare sight. I love it when he does that, because mm-hmm. it's like, oh. He's a sweet baby boy with emotions. Yeah, he's not a robot. <laughs> this is what Damon says. I missed you. I'm jealous of Isanda. Isanda's a slave. I was a slave. The moment ached, Laurent met his gaze, his eyes too clear. You were never a slave, Damianos. You were born to rule just as I was. <laughs> My heart. You're pushing more distance. (laughs) (laughs) Much more distance. Be an asshole. (laughs) Be an asshole too. Also, just something to note, Damon still has no idea what Laurent's trauma is. No. (laughs) I mean, like, I do get the fact that characters... Well, it it is, like, in character for Damon to be, like... Uh, Oh, this is a brick. Yeah. It is in character. When it comes to other people, anyway, Mm. he's kind of like... Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, but like it's not su- it's not surprising to me. But yet again, it's also yeah, like yeah. he doesn't take subtext well. No, <laughs> he doesn't understand it. Mm-mm. 
But even then, like, I see a lot of people are, like, throwing shade. They're like, how could you not, Damon? And it's like, I mean, I agree, but he learns it at his own pace. Yeah. It's not until... I think he also probably doesn't want to think no. that that happened to Laurent. No. But ironically, I think him being that sort of innocent, oblivious to it is good for Laurent. Because yeah. he's treating Laurent... He, I think he knows that something has happened. Yeah. But he's not probing Laurent about it because no. it's trauma. Yeah. It's like, he's not going to focus on that. No. And, but then when he finds out what that trauma is... He's so angry. <laughs> yep. But then Damon goes to reassure the little girl and the old woman from the village that got destroyed mm. that he will find the one who did this. Trying to get them to trust him more, but we see that the girl is doing the same coin trick Laurent did, and Damon's like, ah, shit, this man moves fast. He God, does. He does. <laughs> he does. He doesn't stop. Mm-mm. He's just so charming to the common folk. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Poor Damon. But Nick Anderson and Damon had this little chill exchange. Oh, no. This little exchange before they leave my lass. And Nicandros is not happy in the slightest with Damon. And it goes like this. Damon pulled on a rain. You've been listening to slave gossip. You spent the night in the Prince of Beer's rooms. I spent ten minutes in his rooms. If you think I fucked him in that time, you underrate me. <laughs> oh, Nicandros didn't move his horse out of the way. He played Macadon at the, that village. He played him perfectly as he played you. Nicandros, no. Listen to me, Damianos. We're riding into Achelos because the Prince of Beer has chosen to take his fight into your country. It's Achelos that will be hurt in this conflict. And when the battles are done and Achelos is exhausted by the fight, someone will step in to take the reins of the country. Make sure it's you. The Prince of Beer is too good at com- commanding people too good at manipulating those around him in order to get his way. I see. You're warning me against n- again not to bed him? No, Syndicandros. I know you're going to bed him. <laughs> I'm saying that when he leaves, lets you think about what he wants. <laughs> uh... It's funny that Nicandros, in the small amount of time that he has known Laurent, is more, almost more wary of him than Damon is. Literally. Which is if very I... interesting and shows Damon's trust in character. Yeah, so it he does. He is a Hufflepuff. <laughs> yes, he would be a Hufflepuff. I believe 100% that he's a Hufflepuff. Some people might say he's a Gryffindor, but he's a Hufflepuff. Oh my he's god, he's in, he's in my house. <laughs> I get Damon too. I have Laurent. <laughs> No, but that's good too. It's See, I, I feel like I would be one of Laurent's fangirls. <laughs> I would just tail him around being like, oh my god, he's so good. I'd probably be annoyed at him. <laughs> I'd be like, I want the guts this guy has. Oh. I feel like I need to see the rest of the Slytherin house. Or else <laughs> no personality changes here. Ooh. Moving forward... We head on over to Carthas, mm-hmm. where things are a bit suspicious. Mm-hmm. All the watchtowers are empty. The fort is empty, except for one room where we meet... Your cast! <laughs> that is how I pronounce her name. I am not sure if that's how you actually say it. Your cast or your cast, either way. It, it's, she's a bitch. Yeah. I just call her the secondary bitch, because yeah. the main bitch... Is Laurent. From the moment we meet her, she's the exact same person as mm-hmm. Laurent. Ex- no, exact same mannerisms as Laurent. Mm-hmm. Exhibit A, page 177. Her brows had risen at the crash as at some minor distasteful breach of etiquette. <laughs> and that's like literally when Damon walks into the room and she's like, Hello, Damon. <laughs> and she, this is like, she's just given birth. Yeah. To like a baby, and she's like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. My vagina isn't all bad. <laughs> I didn't just push out a human being. Yeah, no, it's all good. But now we're at a point in the story where 
the stakes are higher. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the point. Like, this is the half or a third of the book that I reckon where, like, it slowly starts to spin out of control. <laughs> and that same herald who brought Nikesa's head tells Laurent that if he refuses the regent's trial in Eos, he will be executed. On top of that, Damon has been framed for killing his father. He will soon learn, thanks to your cast, that he has to now worry about his child who has been sent back to the regent. Dick move. Yeah. But... That's a nice way to put it. Mm. <laughs> like, it's like sticks and stones, conflict after conflict is just being thrown at yes. him. It's and like the way, almost, that, like the... They showed you this, like, how to make a story yeah. line, yeah. where it was like this, and then, like, the climax, and then they'd be like, but the climax doesn't have to just be like this. Sometimes it can be like this. Literally. And I, I like, reading it, I was like, yep, this, that's, that's how this is going. Mm-hmm. There's fucking swirls in it. It's, like, going up. <laughs> yeah. It's just drop down 180 spins. Mm-hmm. And I also think in King Rising in general, we just see Damon suffering a lot more. Yeah. Like, it's kind of ironic, because in the first book, you're like, oh, Damon's a slave, he's captured. He should never go through anything that's so bad. No. And then... And then you get to King's Rising, and, and you're like, like, he's fucked. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, holy shit, he's really going through it now. Yeah. Like, because when you think about it in hindsight, Laurent was, like, just starting to get into shit in Captive Prince. Mm-hmm. Because him and his uncle. And... But then Princess Gambit, it's like him trying to um, get one up over the regent. Mm. But now it's like everything's coming in full force. (laughs) And not only that, but Damon's just suffering. Yeah. (laughs) His reputation is suffering. Mm -hmm. He's basically just like in a rage. After hearing, after that herald came in. Mm. And, but in this moment, as like Damon's having his tantrum, if you will, I love how the moment Laurent walks into the room, it all changes. Mm. It, it's just so signifying of like who these two are to yeah. each other. <laughs> like, Damon's in the middle of having a tantrum and he's like, ah, oh, maybe um, not. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Laurent, and at this moment, like, they're not friends. Or yeah. They're not friends. But Laurent's kind of, him, his presence being there says a lot. Yeah. And though he's not, like, he's not, like, being openly honest and nice, he's still... When is he ever? Yeah, when <laughs> is he ever? <laughs> he's, like, him being there, you know. And he's, he's saying we're in this together. Yes. I'm, like... I can't deal with it. I'm just going to read out the scene between your cast and Laurent. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I love it. Hang on. Oh, yes. Two great minds. Two great trying minds. Trying to fight each other. Mm-hmm. That's what we want. We're in the cell, and this is the conversation they have. She spoke in pure accentless veritian. Damianos has sent me his bed boy. <laughs> Blonde, blue-eyed, and all laced up like a, a Virgo Encanta. Encanta? I'm pretty sure that's what he said. You're his type. Laurent said, you know who I am. <laughs> By way of greeting. Um, the Prince du Jour said, said jo- your cast. There was a pause. Damon, need- <laughs> Damon needed to step forward. Announced his presence and stopped this. He watched Laurent arrange himself against the wall. Laurent said, If you're arcing, I did fuck him. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> I love that they're both just having, like, ah, oh, yes, I fucked him. <laughs> She's like, No, I fucked him. <laughs> Your cast says, I think we both know you weren't the one fucking him. <laughs> You are on your back with your legs in the air. He hasn't changed that much. <laughs> Damon is being obliterated here. <laughs> Poor Damon. He's not even in the room to defend himself. <laughs> He's like, shit, my two hoes are talking. <laughs> my two hoes. <laughs> they both know my sexual proclivity. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your cast voice was as refined as her poise, as if the practice of high manners was not disturbed by either either Laurent's words or her own. Your cast said, "The question is how much you liked it." Damon found himself with his hand on the wood beside the grate, listening as gently as he could for Laurent's reply. He shifted position, trying to get a glimpse of Laurent's face. I see. We are going to trade stories. Shall I tell you my preferred position? I imagine it's so divine. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Guys, terrible people. (laughs) No, I'm crying again. Shit. (laughs) No. Oh, this is... (laughs) Is it no one put down the book where it is? I can't even see because of the tears. Um, <laughs> Laurent said confined. It was her turn to pause. She used the time to peruse his features as if sampling the quality of silk. Both she and Laurent looked utterly at ease. It was Damon whose heart was pounding. She said, Are you arcsing? what it was like. Damon didn't move, didn't breathe. <laughs> he knew your cast knew the danger. <laughs> he felt fixed to the spot as your cast continued her study of Laurent's face. Laurent of Vere, they say you're frigid. They say you rebuff all your suitors, that no man has been good enough to prize your legs apart. I believe you thought it would be brutish and physical, and maybe a part of you even wanted it that way. But you and I both know that Damon does not make love like that. He took you slowly. He kissed you until you started to want it. Laurent said, Don't stop on my account. <laughs> <laughs> you let him undress you. You let him put his hands on you. They hate. They say you hate Akielons, but you let one into your bed. You weren't expecting what it felt like when he touched you. You weren't expecting the weight of his body, how it felt to have his attention, to have him want you. You left out the part near the end, where it was so good I let, I let myself forget what he'd done. Oh dear, said Yorkos. That was the truth. Another pause. It's still gone. <laughs> it's heady, isn't it, said Yorkos. He was born to be a king. <coughs> Just <use. laughs> He's not a stand-in or a second choice like you are. He rules men just by breathing. When he walks into the room, he commands it. People love him like they loved your brother. Ooh. Bitch. (laughs) My dead brother, said Laurent helpfully. Tell me now do the part where I spread for my brother's killer. You can describe it again. (laughs) He couldn't see Laurent's face as he said it. No, he couldn't see Laurent's face as he said it, though Laurent's voice was easy as it was elegant. Lean against the stone wall of the cell. She said, Is it difficult to ride with a man who is more of a king than you are? I wouldn't let Castor hear you call him a king. Or is that what you like about it? That Damon is what you'll never be. (laughs) That he has surety, self-belief, strength of conviction. Those are things that you yearn for. When he focuses it all on you, it makes you feel like you can do anything. Laurent said, Now we are both telling the truth. (laughs) I love that. I'm like... It's interesting, both of them telling the truth when they're both little shits. Yeah. It's not in my favorite anything. Yeah. Don't ever want those two in the same room. No. (laughs) Someone's gonna faint. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be me. Yeah. It's gonna be us. (laughs) We're gonna faint from all this oh tension. The ooh, sass. The sass. Who fucked better? Yeah. <laughs> In the next chapter, because your cast reveals, oh, it's Damon's child that I had. And it's going to the regent. So Damon is sitting in his room overwhelmed from it all. Some protective membrane has been torn away and everything he has not let himself feel is hitting full force. He feels like he's failed his father, and with Laurent's presence, 
All his running thoughts are silenced as he closes the door behind him. And Laurent's like, no, I'm not here to... Laurent said, I'm just here. (laughs) Can we just, like, take a moment? Because for Laurent to just simply be there with no... It means a lot. Because that's not the... He's normally here like, haha, I have a thing I want from you. He's actually like... I'm just here. (laughs) (laughs) I imagine it being, like, the same, like... Straight boy thing, like, need a hug, bro? <laughs> like, that kind of thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I imagine yeah. it to be. Laurent's like, I don't know how to... <laughs> it's just kind of like... <laughs> Damon's like crying on the bed, and he's just like... <laughs> gremlin energy, like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> oh my god, that is so accurate. He doesn't know, he's not used to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still crying. Oh, and on top of that, Damon notices how quiet it is because Laurent has been keeping the servants and everyone away. Just like what he did when Laurent mm-hmm. was drunk. Do, do, do. Yep. And then he puts a hand on the back of Damon's neck and it's stiff. It's a stiff, awkward gesture, but so goddamn sweet because, mm-hmm. boy, he is trying. Because he doesn't touch people mm. he, he doesn't know what contact is no so he's like that's literally it it's like the yeah kind of thing <laughs> that like i know that i've gotten from some guys if i've like started crying in front of them and they're like mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened at work before and i was just like i'm not looking and for no. your comfort i am just crying yeah oh my god yeah he's he's like uh, I I am trying. I, I don't. I'm Please not accept used to it. it. <laughs> Please accept my affection. Um. Okay, I'm gonna reread bits and pieces mm-hmm. of this scene. Apparently, it's on page 190 to 200. End of 200. Okay, it goes for a span of pages. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They're having like a heart to heart because oh, you know yes. this is where it gets deep. Um. Laurent says. Yeah, that's right. They're talking about um, the past and how Laurent said, I hated you. I hated you so badly I thought I'd choke on it. If my uncle hadn't stopped me, I would have killed you. And then you saved my life. And every time I needed you, you were there. And I hated you for that too. Damon says, I killed your brother. The silence seemed to tighten painfully. He made himself look at Laurent. A bright, sharp presence behind him. What are you doing here? Damon said. He was pale in the moonlight, set against the dim shadows of the room, and that shrouded them both. I know what it's like to lose family. Is there no way forward for us? said Damon. It just came out. Beside him, he could feel Laurent holding himself very still. You mean... Will I come back to your bed for the little time we have left? I mean that we hold the centre. We hold everything from Aquitar to Sision. Can we not call it a kingdom and rule it together? Am I such a poorer prospect than a Patron princess or a daughter of the Empire? He made himself say no more than that, that the words crowded his chest. He waited. It surprised him that it hurt to wait. And that the longer he waited, the more he felt he couldn't bear to hear the answer, though brought to him on a knife point. When he made himself look at Laurent, Laurent's eyes on him were very dark, his voice quiet. How can you trust me after what your own brother did to you? Because he was false, said Damon, and you are true. I have never known a truer man, he said into the stillness. I think if I gave you my heart, you would treat it tenderly. Laurent turned his head, denying Damon his face. Damon could see his his breathing. After a moment, he said in a low voice, When you make love to me like that, I can't think. Don't think, said Damon. Damon saw the flickering change, the tension as the words provoked an internal battle. Damon said, don't think. Don't, said Laurent, toy with me. I have not the means to defend against this. I don't toy with you. I don't think, said Damon. Kiss me, said 
Fifth of Root, and then flushed. Oh my god. Yep. I just need to die first. That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, my my heart, my heart. He had learned in the course of their one night together to tell when Laurent was taken unawares, taken aback. It wasn't easy to anticipate, the gaps in Laurent's experience not mapping to anything that he understood. He felt it now, Laurent's eyes very dark, uncertain of what he should do. I meant, don't let you think. Laurent didn't answer. Damon waited in the quiet. I'm not, said Laurent, and then as the moment stretched out between them, I'm not an innocent who needs his hand held through every step. Aren't you? God damn it, Damon, you know him so well. <clears throat> Realization came to Damon. Laurent's weariness was not at this moment the high walls of the defended citadel. It was that of a man with a with a position of his guard down. Por- sorry, with a portion of his guard down. He was desperately unused to it. And then he said, at Ravnell, I. It had been a long time since I had with anyone. I was nervous. I know, said Damon. There has... He stopped. There has only been one other person. Softly. I'm a little more experienced than that. (laughs) Yes, that is immediately apparent. (laughs) Is it? A little pleased. (laughs) Damon. He's like, yes. (laughs) For yeah. once I know more! Yeah. <laughs> Damon score one, Laurent zero. <laughs> <laughs> Laurent, I'd never hurt you. He heard Laurent's strange, disbelieving breath, and he realised what he had said. I know, said Damon, that I did hurt you. Laurent's motionless was careful. Even his breathing was careful. He didn't turn back to look at Damon. I hurt you, Laurent. That's enough, stop, said Laurent. It wasn't right. You were just a boy. You didn't deserve what happened to you. I said that's enough. Is it hard to hear? Uh, He thought of Auguste, thought of how no boy deserved to lose his brother. And then they, they, they go on this whole thing, because that obviously goes into the intimate scene. Which we will not be reading, because yeah. we are friends, and that will be uncomfortable. <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> Just dramatically read smut. Smut. <laughs> oh my god. The only time that we have ever watched smut together is Fifty Shades Grey. Yeah. And that was because we were laughing about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... But they have their emotional and intense intimate scene, because this time Laurent is with Damianos, not Damon, mm. and, um, he, oh, that's right, because he's making him say his name, he's like, say it, Damianos, and I think Picard, because the thing is, whenever you're pulling out that sort of trauma in these kinds of scenes, mm. it can be wrong, <laughs> yeah, so easily, but I think Picard executed this aspect very well. I think it's because she's done really well with names because I do the exact same thing with how when one of my characters is changing feelings for another, they regard them differently by mm. a name. So they hate each other. In one of the books that I'm writing, they use last names. Uh, one of them uses full names because the other is a stranger. Mm. And then... It switches and they both start just using the first name. Mm. So it's like she's done really well with how people regard the other person via their name. So yeah. She's done well. <laughs> yeah, it's. I feel like it would be overlooked as well mm-hmm. in general. But. Um, Cause especially because it's not like just a quick change. Like you see that. Um, Laurent does use. I always fuck out how you say it. Is it um? No, like it's Damon's name. Oh, Damianos. No. Uh, yeah, it is. I just fuck it up every uh, time I say. Oh, okay. So, but like he does 
use like that version of the name mm. throughout the series mm. but like it's interesting from when it goes to being the prince killer to being the person he has feelings for yeah so. having those two things connect mm. Because when I was reading it the first time, I always wondered how are we going to get past this? Because that's, like, the whole point of... Like, I know why people were so outraged by the first book. Because the whole point of those horrible things happening is to make you believe that this can't happen. No. And I feel like the the payoff that you get, that's why it's so intense. Is because you really can't imagine this working and being executed well. Laurent can't just pretend that Damon never killed his brother. It's not that easy. Especially because... He loved his brother. <laughs> and I love how, like, Auguste doesn't even... Ex- he doesn't exist in this book, but he's so important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Because I haven't read the short story, so I don't know if he's in any of them. Mm-mm. No. But he just... Like, I can just imagine... And I, I know it's because I've looked at fan art. Yeah. But I just imagine him... <laughs> And little Laurent just following him around and doing anything he does. And and August just, like, protecting him yeah. from, like, what Via is. Yeah. And I'm hurting myself. <laughs> I like pain. <laughs> we are sadomasochists. Yeah, sadomasochists. Yeah. <laughs> we like causing pain. Oh, it's yes. your fault I read these books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and Damon can't pretend that Laurent never whipped him. Yeah. So you have to face these issues head on, which is why Damon literally, literally says, it's me here with you, say my name. And Laurent says his name like it's Prince Killer. So he's saying it with disdain. Like he, mm. he, he it's pushed out of him. Like he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to say it. No. Knowing for, like fully who he is. It's very harrowing. And... Like, he's found solace in the man who's destroyed his life. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, that's so angsty. But, <laughs> but um, he's also the same man who's putting it all back together. And or I'm trying like, at the very trying least. Trying at the very least. <laughs> and... And I think to Laurent as well, that's the most anyone's ever done. It's try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. And then... Finally, drawing the ties of his jacket loose and showing some skin, Laurent says, I know who you are. I know who you are, Damianos. So, like, there's a whole process. Like, I love how... Like, literally, as he's, like, not metaphorically naked, but getting physically naked, Mm -hmm. he's like, I know who you are, Damianos. Like, I I just like how that reflects in those scenes. Yes. But... Yeah, it's the morning after, and Damon wakes up before Laurent, and then this is what happens. Um, he lifted his hand to brush Laurent's cheek, smiling. He was opening his eyes. Damon said Laurent, and Damon's heart moved in his chest because the way Laurent said his name was quiet, happy, and a little shy. Laurent had only said it ever one- once before last night. He's shy. <laughs> He's a shy baby yeah. boy. I have, fight me on this, but I reckon if in an alternate universe, Damon's like the beefy jock in high school. Oh, yes. And Laurent is like the quiet bookish kid. Yes. <laughs> always longing these stairs at him. And he's yes. Like, oh. and, he, and like, his brother like graduated, so now he's left alone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's probably fanfic of it somewhere. Like, if there's not... We're writing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I love thinking about like, oh, it's sweet boy. I love thinking of alternate universes. I know. It's just like, mention. Oh. Uh, you know it's real when you think of alternate universes. Yes. <laughs> so it's still the morning after scene, but then, oh yeah, they were gazing at each other. To Damon's delight, Laurent reached out to trace a touch down over his body. Laurent, Laurent, mm, Laurent was... <laughs> And Laurent was looking at him as if he couldn't quite believe the fact of him, as if even touch could not quite confirm this. What? said Damon, who was smiling. You're very... said Laurent, and then flushing. Attractive. Oh, is this so awesome? Really? said Damon in a ritual voice. Yes, said Laurent. Oh, 
breather. Take a breather. Honestly, I will have fluff over smart any yeah. day. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I totally agree. Specifically with this book series too, mm-hmm. I'm like, I need to see. It's it's the so world. harsh. You need happiness. Yeah, I need fluff. <laughs> I need to see that that nice sweet. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm awesome gonna content. Stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Damon's like, "Well, you are too." And then Laurent dropped his head slightly on the edge of the laugh, on the edge of laughter. Um, he said with absurd fondness. Most people tell me that right away. <laughs> Was it the first time he had said it? Damon looked at Laurent, who was now lying half on his side, his blonde hair a little must, m- moosed, eyes full of teasing light, sweet and simple in the morning. Laurent's beauty was heart selfing. I would have, said Damon, if I'd had the chance to court you properly. I'd come in, I'd come in state to your father. If there had been a chance for our countries to be friends. He felt the mood shift thinking of the past. Laurent didn't seem to notice it. Thank you. I know exactly how it would have been. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you and August would have been slapping each other on the back and watching tournaments. And I would have been trailing around, tugging on your sleeve, trying to get a look in edgewise. Mm. Has someone written an A for that universe? Because <laughs> that's what I want! Mm. <laughs> if you know, please tell us. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> yes, my god. <laughs> Damon held himself very still. This easy way of speaking of August was new, and he didn't want to disturb it. After a moment, Laurent said, He would have liked you. That is such... Oh, that is such a perfect line. I'm sorry, but just for the modern AU that you said, David and August were on the same team, so they would have been friends. Yes, they would have been. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. Yeah. We're just going to yeah. write that. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Even after I started courting his little brother, said Damon carefully, he watched Laurent stop the way that he did when he was taken by surprise and then lifted his eyes to meet Damon's. Yes said Laurent softly, his cheeks red and slightly. He's blushing so much. (laughs) Same. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The kiss happened because they couldn't help it and it was so sweet and so right that Damon felt a kind of egg. He he pulled back. The realities of the outside world seemed to press in at him. I... He couldn't say it. No, listen to me. He felt Laurent's hand firm on the back of his neck. I'm not going to let my uncle hurt you. Laurent's blue gaze was calm and steady as if he had made a decision and wanted Damon to know. It's what I came here last night to say. I'm going to take care of it. Promise me. Damon heard himself say, promise me we won't let him. I promise. (sighs) Everything goes to shit after this. I know. I literally, as you were reading that, I'm like, she gave us fluff because she was going to fuck us up. Yeah. (laughs) She totally fucked us over. Mm. She knew what she was doing. She was like, haha, I'm going to show them what it could be, yep. what it could have been, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to hurt them. Yeah. And this ain't over yet. Because I literally, I remember reading that part, and I was like, oh, this is so cute. And then I remember what book I'm reading, and I'm like, there's a reason for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, there was a knock at the door. <laughs> Come in, said Laurent, turning his head towards the sound. Damon said, Laurent, shocked and full on display as the door swung open. <laughs> Pallas entered. Laurent greeted him with no self-consciousness at all. Wait. Yes. <laughs> Laurent's voice was matter-of-fact. Pallas's mouth opened. Damon saw what Pallas saw. Laurent, like some dream of a newly fucked virgin, himself <laughs> unmistakably above him, fully ran. <laughs> and he flushed all over. In Eos, he might have dallied with the lover while a household slave attended to some task in the room, but only because a slave was so far beneath him in status as not to signify. The idea of a soldier watching him make love to Laurent was breaking open his mind. <laughs> Laurent had never even taken an acknowledged, an acknowledged lover before, let alone Pallas forced his eyes to the floor. My apologies. <laughs> I came to seek your orders for the morning. 
we're busy currently. <laughs> have a servant prepare the bath and bring us food in, at big morning. Laurent spoke like an administrator glancing up from his desk. <laughs> yes, exalted. Palace turned blindly and made for the door. What is it? said <laughs> Laurent. As he looked at Damon, who had detached himself and was sitting with the sheet pulled up where he had clutched it to cover himself, and then with a burgeoning delight of discovery. Are you shy? In Achilles we don't, said Damon, in front of other people. Not even the king? Especially not the king, <laughs> said Damon, for whom the king still partly meant his father. But how does his, but how does the court know if the royal marriage has been consummated? <laughs> now I'm crying again. The king knows whether or not it has been consummated or implied. The rot stared at him. Damon was surprised when the rot dropped his head, and even more surprised when the rot's shoulders started shaking around the laughter emerged. You wrestled him without any clothes on. That is sport, <laughs> said Damon. He, he folded his arms, thinking that Mauritians lacked any sense of dignity. It was the rot sitting up and pressing <laughs> a delighted kiss to his lips. Had him slightly mollified. Later, the king of Beer really consummates his marriage in front of the court? Not in front of the court, said Laurent, as if it were unspeakably foolish. In front of the council. Guyon is on the council, <laughs> said Damon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. These boys, these men. <laughs> these children. <laughs> these children. I uh, think that's a really funny way of also showing the difference between Veer and... I can't really know that. I, I, I... Why am I, I gonna bet. say? I was <laughs> gonna say Akatolius. <laughs> Akatolius. Oh. He's taking it over your life now. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, Sarah J. Mass is everywhere. <laughs> you did a good job avoiding it. I know. I'll stay out of it. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it shows the difference in a funny way. In a funny Because it's been like, ha, oh, they're so polar opposites. And this is dark and deep, and then they're like, haha, we fuck in front of the council. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. And Damon's like, that's not no, normal. <laughs> no. And it's funny because you think Damon wouldn't really give a shit, but he does. No, it's, it's really interesting because it seems like they would be very like, haha, here's my penis. Yeah. Like, obviously, we saw that in the... <laughs> we saw that in the sports, exactly. in the games. And, you know, the raunt has been shown to be the one that is more prudish. Yeah. So it's interesting that when it comes to them having sex... It's flipped, and yeah. it's almost like um, Damon's kind of protective of how others see Laurent. Yeah, which true. I think is adorable. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I think it's absolutely adorable. Oh my god! Yeah, I th- and of course she fucks us over. <laughs> you bitch. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We love you, Picard. Thank you you're for this mean. for this amazing amazing you're, story. You're mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're great, but you're also horrible. <laughs> Why you do this? I think it was like twelve a.m. Mm. when I was finishing this book up, mm. and I remember being, and I was telling you that I was so close, and you're like, just send me your reaction to anything, <laughs> and so I did. And it's just me crying most of the time. <laughs> yep. That about sums it up. Mm-hmm. Mm, and a lot of screaming. Mm-hmm. Oh. I like to call this next part the side quest for good reasons. If anything, this is the calm before the storm. But as they're preparing their plans, Laurent appears in a chitin and Damon drops the wine pitcher. And I love how Laurent's not even phased. Like, he, he doesn't even notice that Damon cannot handle him yeah, he's like, <laughs> in a chitin. That's... That's my clothing. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I imagine that to be like the um the like if you're walking around your like partner's hoodie or something like mm. that and they're like Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That 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 hit and I don't know why that hit, but it hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the the iconic line, it was shorter sitting down. <laughs> 
I will always remember that line. Imagine saying that, like, <laughs> in your partner's hoodie and you're like, it's shorter sitting there. <laughs> and even, like, in that scene, the Ron's like, Damon. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> look, look. With battle formation. <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah. Look at the map. Yeah. He's like, what the hell is your deal? He's like, oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, just thinking about your ass. Yeah, <laughs> just thinking about you're showing so much skin. <laughs> um, okay, but anyway, on to this whole quest. Quest: Damon, Laurent, and a few select soldiers on both Achaeon and Berician sides are now on their way to the king's meet. But they are disguised as humble cloth merchants, supposedly escorting the lady your cast. The whole time, the candles is like. Do I need to remind you of how strongly I object to this? <laughs> the candles in this book isn't me. Just that, yeah. really. That's all it is. I did the proof. I did. You didn't know that I did the proof, David. <laughs> and David's like denied. <laughs> I deny everything. You have. You say anything? Deny. <laughs> Uh, you could die. Uh, denied. Mm. And I always think of Nicandros as being that, um, oh, that meme. It's of that actor who has a cigarette. <laughs> he's on the balcony and it's a cigarette in his mouth and he looks so done. It's, <laughs> I can't remember who it was. I will, sh- I will, oh, uh, it's ben, ben Affleck. Oh, yes. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that is Nicandros the Just entire that. time. Uh, but... Anyway, they've stopped at the border, pretending everything's fine, when the sentries search out your cast, and I love how it plays out, because without stating anything, Laurent, <laughs> Laurent just gets on the wagon, and Nicandre's just like, how did you... No, sorry, not gets on the wagon, gets out of the wagon, and Nicandre's is like, how did you get your cast to go for it? And he's like, I didn't. Boom. <laughs> The power of effective writing. The card is the queen of show, don't tell. Like, you know. <laughs> you dressed it up for the lady you'll cast. And it worked. <laughs> and it worked. What do you know? I'm pretty sure they came out blushing like, oh, she's so pre- pretty. Mm. Um, But also as they travel for a couple days and nights. One of these nights, Damon and Laurent are laying beside each other on their bedrolls, and Damon says, There is a summer palace in Eos outside the capital. My mother designed the gardens there. They say it's built of artisan foundations. He thought of the meandering walks, the delicate flowering southern orchards, the spray of orange blossom. It's cool in summer, and there are fountains and tracks for riding. His pulse beat with the uncharacteristic nerves, so that he felt almost shy. When all this is over, we could take courses and stay a week in the palace since the night together in Carthus. They hadn't dared to speak about the future. And he felt Laurent holding himself carefully and there was a strange pause after a moment. Laurent said softly, I'd like that. Wholesome! Wholesome! Wholesome, Because she's about to completely fuck us over. There There are steps to this. They're stuck with some bad luck when one of the wagons breaks, and just as one of Castor's squadrons are passing by, Laurent does this. <coughs> Page 146, people. This boy. This boy. Hey! Laurent called out. He was pulling himself up from the front wheel of the wagon on top. He had a swathe of yellow silk in his hand, and he stood on the wagon waving at colourful... Waving it colourfully at the squadron. Hey, you Achaeans! Damon's stomach clenched and he took an impotent step forward. Stop him, said Nicandros, <laughs> making a similar movement forward. Too late. Proper reaction? <laughs> mm-hmm. On the horizon, the squadron was wheeling like a flock of starling- starlings. It was too late to stop it. Too late to grab Laurent's ankle. Laurent was clambering down from the wagon top, still clutching the silk. He greeted the squadron with a relieved voice and exaggerated version of his, and an exaggerated version of his Russian accent. But thank you, officer. What could we, what could we have done if you hadn't stopped? <laughs> we have to, we have eighteen bolts of cloth to deliver to Milo at Argos, and as you can see, Christoffel has sold us a defective wagon. <laughs> there was no blue dress to save them. 
the soldier asks, You are the merchants? We are. What name? Charles, said Damon, who was the only merchant he knew. You are Charles, the renowned Venetian cloth merchant? And said the officer skeptically, skeptically, as if this was a name well known to him. No, said Laurent, as if this was the most foolish thing in the world. I am Charles, <laughs> the renowned Venetian cloth merchant. This is my assistant, La <laughs> It's not even far away from Damon. <laughs> it's their ship name, <laughs> La I love that. I know. Laurent thought that straight away. He's like, oh my god, I'm a genius. <laughs> what are we gonna? How do we mix these names together? <laughs> The officer says, well, Charles, it looks like you've got a broken axle. Damon stared at him. They were encircled by 50 mounted Achaean soldiers. Your cost was inside that wagon. The officer said, we're patrolling for Damianos of Achaelos. Who is Damianos of Achaelos? And Laurent, his face was utterly open, his blue eyes unblinking, upturned to the officer and his horse. He's the king's son, Damon heard himself saying. Castor's brother. <laughs> don't, <Idiot. laughs> don't be ridiculous, La Man. Prince Damianos is dead, said Laurent. Oh my god, I'm crying. <laughs> oh my eyes. I can't even read. Okay. <laughs> he is hardly the man to whom this officer is referring to. Then to the officer, I apologise for my assistant, he doesn't keep up with Achaelon affairs. On the contrary, it's believed Damianos of Achaelos is alive, and that he crossed into the provenance with his men six days ago, the officer gestured to his squadron, waving them forward. Damianos is in Achaelos. To Damon's disbelief, he was waving them forward to mend the wagon. And then one of the soldiers asked Nicandros for a wooden block to brace the wheel. Nicandros passed it to him wordlessly. Nicandros had the slightly stupefied look that Damon remembered from several of his own adventures with the Laurent. Oh, yeah. And then the Laurent, they fixed the wagon and the Laurent's like, thank you, officer. Lead on. <laughs> thank you, officer. Thank you, sir. I feel like that is just such a Laurent thing to do but oh. I also feel like it shows that Damon's rubbing off on him because yeah. it's a very like spontaneous Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are just tumble cloth merchants this is all we are yeah. good sir I good would sir. like you to fix my wagon for mm. me and I imagine like the get ups like the, yeah. the hat with the feather um, yes <laughs> and shortly we come to my favourite scene it's one of my favourite scenes <laughs> Charles and the men are escorted to the inn. On page <laughs> 250. Because when you said the inn, I was like, eh. <laughs> uh, And anyway, the Ron says, Thank you, Stavos. We can take it from here. Not at all. Let me escort you inside. Very well. The Ron showed no sign of hesitation whatsoever. Come, the men. Damon followed him in, acutely aware that he was being separated from his men. Laurent simply walked into the inn. And then... (laughs) Damon thought absurdly that the unrailed stairs could be high ground in a fight, as if they could take on the entire garrison, just the two of them. Perhaps he could overwhelm Starvos. He could negotiate some kind of exchange. Starvos' life for their freedom. Starvos was introducing Laurent to the innkeeper. This is Charles, the renowned Venetian cloth merchant. That isn't Charles, <laughs> the renowned Venetian cloth merchant. <laughs> the innkeeper looked at the road. I can assure you that I am. <laughs> I can assure you, Charles, the Venetian cloth merchant, is already here. <laughs> there was a pause. Damon found himself looking at Laurent as if the man stepping to the mark in a spear throwing competi- competition after the last competitor has thrown a perfect bullseye. That is impossible. Call him here. <laughs> yes, call him out here, said Starvos. And everyone waited while a serving boy retreated to the party of guests in the next room. A moment later, Damon heard a familiar voice. Who is this imposter claiming to be me? They came face to face with Charles of Rishon Cloth Merchant. <laughs> 
Charles had changed very little in the months since they had seen one another. His expression, merchant serious. <laughs> like his clothing, a heavy, expensive-looking brocade. He had a... He, he was a man in his late thirties with an eager nature tempted by the kind of presence that developed over years of trading. Charles took one look at the unmistakable blue eyes and blonde hair of his prince, <laughs> who had last seen who he had last seen in Damon's lap, dressed as a pet in a tavern at Nisson. His eyes widened then with a truly heroic effort effort. Charles <laughs> the Charles <laughs> If he is Charles, then who are you? said the officer to Charles. I, said Charles, am he is Charles. I have known him these eight years, said the innkeeper. That's right. He is Charles. I am Charles. We are cousins, said Charles, gamely. Named after our grandfather, Charles. Thank (laughs) Thank you, Charles. This man believes I am the king of Akiella. I simply meant that you might have been an agent of the king. <laughs> Damon put his eyes somewhere where they wouldn't be meet Laurent's, while everyone else stared at him, at his blonde face with its pale, arched eyebrows, spreading his hands, a Verusian gesture to go with his Verusian accent. I think we can all agree he isn't the king of Achielos, said the innkeeper. If Charles vouches for his cousin, that must satisfy the garrison. I certainly do vouch for him, said Charles. <laughs> <sighs> and then and then after everyone all the soldiers leave Charles is like in disguise again <laughs> what is it this time a mission for the crown a secret in interviews no fear your highness it's my honour to keep your secret and then they get introduced to like all these new merchants and then um Charles is like this is my assistant Goulamé this is my assistant, La Man, <laughs> said Laurent. And I love how, as well, in this scene, because, um, this is for Nick Andrews. Nick Andrews had to stand awkwardly by the end of the table when he arrived. He frowned when he realised he had to give his report to Laurent. The wagons are unpacked, Charles. Thank you, soldier, said Laurent, adding expansively to the group. We usually operate in Delphur, but I've been forced to come south. Nicandros is completely useless as a Kairos. <laughs> Laurent said loudly enough for Nicandros to hear him. He doesn't know the first thing about cloth. <laughs> I love it. He's poking fun at him. Oh, uh, but which yeah. is a very Laurent thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially because he knows in that situation Nicandros cannot do anything. <laughs> oh no, he cannot. Later that night, we get another iconic... Damon and Laurent moment. After having their fun with each other, Damon is asking Laurent what he wants, and Laurent says, show me how it could be. And Damon says, I would court you with all the grace and courtesy that you deserve. And to make that intimate scene even more bittersweet, Laurent reveals that he's glad Damon's here, because he always thought he'd face his uncle alone. And after we part with Charles... We get little snippets of the Verusian and Achaeans getting along. George is teaching Actus dice and is also learning Achaean words. Lazar and Pallas are basically fuck buddies at this point. (laughs) (laughs) But there's also a conversation between Damon and Pascal that gives us insight into where he stands between Laurent and the Regent. That's right, because we don't know... Because we don't really know much about Pascal at this point. I mean, we do know, but we don't know everything. Mm. Damon says, you never told me how you ended up in Laurent's faction. I was the regent's physician. So you ministered his household and to his boys, said Pascal. Damon said nothing. Mm. And before he died, my brother served the king. And I never swore my oath. I never swore my brother's oath to the king, but I like to think that I'm carrying it out. So then you like, you know... In that moment, like, Pascal isn't on the regent's side, I yeah. reckon. It's pretty obvious. But, um, the night before the kings meet, we get to see Laurent's point of view once again. And he reveals the truth of your caste situation. 
your cast is like, so you have your own plans? Yes, said Laurent. And when this happened the first time, I was like, what is he doing? But then he, st- he stepped forward, unlocking the barred doors of the wagon and let it swing open. And your cast doesn't, doesn't immediately, you know, take the bait. She's like, is this a trap? And Which he's, is a fair thought to have. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I think it is Castor's child. And your cast didn't answer him. There was a silence in which her gaze was on him. Laurent regarded her in turn. Around them, the camp stayed quiet, no sounds except for the breeze and the night. I think you saw it clearly in those twilight days in Achelos. The end was coming, and Damianos wouldn't listen to anyone. The only way to save his life was to persuade Castor to send him as a slave to Via. To do that, you had to get in Castor's bed. Her expression didn't alter, but her, he felt the change in her, the new careful way she was holding herself. In the cool night air, it transmitted something to him, against her will. It gave something away, and she was angry about it, and for the first time she was afraid. He said, I think it's Castor's child, because I don't think he would use Damon's child against him. Then you underestimate, underestimate, yeah, underestimate, fuck, <laughs> underestimate, underestimate me. <laughs> I can't speak. Do I? He held her gaze. I suppose we'll find out. We're alike, you you said. Would you have opened the door for me? I don't know, but you opened one for him. Her voice was wiped clean of inflection ruthlessly so that nothing showed but a mocking mild bitterness. You mean the only difference between us is that I chose the wrong brother? As the stars began to drift across the sky, Laurent thought about Nikkei standing in the courtyard with a handful of sapphires. I don't think you chose. Mmm. So now, like, after that moment... I I speculate still. I think she cared about Damon. I definitely agree with that. But mm. I also... We don't know what mm. the two of them did no. while Damon's being a slave. No. We don't know that. No, so I think we'll it's know. very pos- probable mm. that it's Castle's child. Yeah. But I think she's just using whatever she can to hopefully stay alive. Yeah. Which, you know what? Mm. I hope for her sake it's Damon's child, but it could still be Castle's yeah. child. That's mm. It's something that really twisted me. I thought Laurent would be angry about it, but he's like, no, it's okay. This yeah. is what you used to do. It's okay. Like, mm. He's surprisingly very sympathetic. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is actually a really nice moment. Yeah, and I feel kind of sorry for your cast. But Same. I also feel like she chose her path. Yeah. And- she knew. She, like, I think she knew either way she was going to get fucked in the end. Yeah, yeah. Not the good way either. <laughs> Not, the, <laughs> <laughs> Not no. the good way. She's like, oh. She knew in the end it was probably going to end up bad for her no matter which yeah. brother she chose. Because yeah. if she chose Damon and Castor killed them both, mm. what's the point? But yeah. if she chose Castor, I think she saw that as the most probable way it was going to end up well for her. Mm. But... She's going to have to sleep with him. Yeah. She's going to have to get in his bed and have his baby. <sighs> Unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. She was, she was one of my favourites. Mm. Uh, favourite characters. Because like, the whole time you're like, oh my gosh, she's a bitch, I hate her. Yeah. But no, again, no one in this book, apart from like <laughs> the really bad characters, mm. aka the regent, um, no one in this book is fully bad yeah. or good. That's... Yeah, I love books that deal with moral ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Every person in this book is screwed up in one way or another, Mm -hmm. whether they've killed someone, whether they've indirectly killed someone, Mm. they've done something wrong in their life that has made them the person that they are in these books. Yeah. I think when we imagine Laurent and Damon in that cute fantasy where he courts him, how do we know? Yeah, we don't. They might have still hated each other yeah. because they were on opposing sides. Maybe it's an arranged marriage AU, which mm. I love those two. <laughs> I love those two too. <laughs> so, like, you know, you, I do this now. Like, you can think about what could have happened as much as you like, but the only thing you can do is live with what you have. Mm. And I think the cast is very good at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. 
And kudos to her for mm-hmm. doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what she's trying to achieve is not easy to achieve. No. I, I, there are many times where I'm like, this could have gone so wrong. For but, her, yeah. especially. But it's, like, she's, she's, you can tell she's someone who's thought of this through and through. She's thought of every single decision yeah. that almost everyone could make. Yeah. And draft I, and redraft. I, yeah. I don't even think Laurent's thought as much no. as she has because yes, he's in on kind of what the regent was been doing, but she's, he's not in on what Caster's doing. Mm. She is kind of more decided on what both will do. Yeah. And, um, I remember like in an interview, oh no, that's right. Cause Picard has these CDs where she walks you through like the process of like certain scenes from Princess Gambit, I think mm-hmm. it was, and she talked about how she crafted that first intimate scene with Damon and Laurent, and how like she went through so many times of like oh initially like Damon and Laurent weren't on the bed they were like on the window, but that didn't work for them and then they were mm-hmm. on the bed and like like how Laurent responds back to Damon without it being without it being too much yeah. for him because that's the one thing in those scenes because I was like is Laurent gonna break character because that's yeah. what often happens in those moments like it's really hard to well, I just don't see it often or maybe I haven't yeah. read enough good books <laughs> so yeah. I yeah I really enjoy seeing Laurent break from his persona. It's mm. such a good thing to see. It is. And it's believable. Yeah. You believe that he was this young boy that used yeah. to follow around his brother. It's this... not just like a, a background for him that she made up to no. make him more human. No. It's something that when you see these moments in King's Rising, you go, yeah, okay. Mm. <laughs> I believe you. I see little kid Laurent, yeah. not this child of Veer who's been severely fucked up. Yeah. Then the moment Damon and Laurent enter the King's Meet, the regent is there on the throne and everything just goes downhill. No, we are not trading the baby for your cast. Laurent is giving himself up to the regent to ensure Damon's safety, but it doesn't go as simply planned. Page uh, 286. I remember reading this scene and I was so angry at everybody. (laughs) There was not one character that I was happy with in this scene. I was like, you're all stupid. (laughs) I hate you all. And it's the way the regent delivers it. He's oh. like, oh, said the regent. No, the child was not on offer. I'm sorry. Were you thinking of making a grand gesture? I prefer to keep him. No, I am here for my nephew. He is going to stand trial before the council. Then he will die for his crimes. I don't need to negotiate or give up the child. Laurent is, <laughs> Laurent is going to get down on his knees and beg me to take him. Aren't you, Laurent? Laurent said I'm getting angry <laughs> Laurent said Damon I told you to get out and this is where I know Laurent's about to break because he's like I don't want Damon to see this uh, so many things are happening Laurent will ne- no <laughs> Laurent will never kneel to you said Damon he pushed himself towards the- forward to stand between Laurent and the regent you don't think so said the regent Damon said Laurent he wants you to leave, said the regent. Aren't you curious why? Damon, said Laurent. He has knelt for me. The you re- Hufflepuff, <laughs> <please>! <laughs> I'm sorry, I spiked that so much. Yeah. Oh, Damon! Laurent does not want you to see this. <sighs> the regent said it in a calm, matter-of-fact voice so that it didn't penetrate at first. It was just a collection of words. Even when Damon turned to see crimson on Laurent's cheek like a stain. And then the meaning of those words began forcing out all other thoughts. I probably should have turned him away, but who can resist when a boy with a face like that asks, asks you to stay with him? He was, so lo- he was so lonely after his brother died. Uncle, don't leave me alone. Rage. It provided ca- clarity and simplicity, burning away all thoughts. 
Laurent's awful expression, the movement of the white cloaked sentries, the first scrape of steel. Damon had drawn his sword and was going to drive it into the regent's arm, unarmed body. This is when Damon knows. He it's knows. Up. <laughs> and then he's like, they have him on the ground all restrained. You have drawn your sword in the king's meat, they say. Damon's eyes locked on the regent. Nothing mattered but a promise. I'm going to kill you. You have broken the peace of the hall. Damon said, the moment you laid your hands on him, you were dead. The laws, of the, the laws of the king's meat are sacred. Damon said, I will be the last thing that you see. You will go in the ground with my blade in your flesh. <laughs> your life is forfeit to the king, said the sentry. And then Damon heard the words. The laugh that came out of him was hollow and jagged. The king, he said, with total scorn. Which king? Laurent was staring at him with huge eyes. Unlike Damon, it had only taken one of the king's meat soldiers to restrain Laurent, his arms forced behind his back, his breathing shallow. In fact, there was only one king, said the regent, and slowly the impact of what he had done began to make itself clear to Damon. Damon! You've read that entire thing yet. I'm just sitting here furious. I hate the regent so much. Also, I want to talk about the way Picard uses descriptors in there because normally when she talks about um, Laurent blushing, Mm. it's like cutesy, but stain. Yeah, I was confused when she said that. I'm like, does he have blood on his cheek? And it's all, it's like, it's not wanted. No. Like, and I, like, you were reading it then, and I was like, holy shit, that's good. Yeah. Because it's changed from us seeing cutesy moments mm. of him blushing with, and him getting flustered. Yeah. With Damon, to now, it's an unwanted show of his emotions. Yeah. And, oh, it's so good. It is so good. <laughs> I'm still angry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then Damon says, no, you heard what he did. You all heard him. Are you going to let him do this? Kill him, said the regent. He spoke with indifferent authority. And Laurent Laurent said no. He said it to his uncle in a flat, emotionless voice Damon had never heard before. Stop it. He, It's me you want. said. And Damon said, Laurent, in a final terrible understanding, resolving. As Laurent said, it's me you want, not him. The regent's voice was mild. I don't want you, Laurent. You are a nuisance, a minor inconvenience that I will clear from my path without much thought. (sighs) Laurent, said Damon, trying to stop what was happening from the restricted, restrained position on his knees. I'll come with you to Eos, said Laurent, in the same detached voice. I'll let you have your trial. Just let him... He didn't look at Damon. Let him live... Let him walk out of here whole and alive. Take me. The regent's eyes were on Laurent, regarding him with considering attention. Beg, said the regent. Laurent was held fast in the grip of a soldier, his arms twisted behind his back, the white cotton of his chitin in disarray. The soldier released him, pushing him forward into the silence. Laurent didn't quite stumble, then began steadily to take one step, then another. Laurent is going to get down on his knees and beg. Like a man walking towards a cliff edge, Laurent came forward to stand before his uncle. Slowly, he went to his knees. Please, said Laurent. Please, uncle. I was wrong to defy you. I deserve punishment, please. Mm. There was a surreal horror to what was happening. No one was stopping it. Mm. And then, after the regent accepts this thing Laurent has done. He says, You see, Laurent, I am a reasonable man when you are properly penitent. I am merciful. Yes, uncle. Thank you, uncle. I hate pedophiles. Mm. So, he's such a creepy guy. He is. So creepy and he makes me so angry. I know. Because the whole act is him... He always disregards to Laurent as being this petulant, petulant child. Exactly. And it's just... Yet... <sighs> and oh my god, him victim blaming. Like, this is 
not just a problem with the book, it's a problem with the world, yeah. and it pisses me off so damn much. It is not the victim's fault if somebody rapes them. No. Like, and he's like, oh, yes, he was asking for a Damon, and I'm just here like, he was a child yeah. going through loss. Oh. You can comfort them, but not in that way, because no. that's not comfort. That's trauma. Yeah. Who's the adult here taking advantage of a child? Exactly. Oh, God. Yeah. And I, I always People think... think there's a power imbalance between fucking LeBron and Damon. <laughs> that power imbalance is so shit. <laughs> oh, God, no. It's nothing compared to LeBron and the Regent. Um, but I always see artworks, fan arts, sorry, of... I don't know if it's from bits of dialogue from the Summer Palace talking about the past with, with like, what Laurent thought his life was going to be like, or if it's from this, but it's, like, all these fan arts of, like, baby Laurent saying, I thought I'd never have anyone, and he's, like, crying, and the regent, the regent's, like, got his hand on his shoulder, and it's, like, oh, it's, like, all these moments where you're like god fucking damn it It, i think that if somebody that wasn't in the fandom looked at it they would have been like oh they're comforting and and we're just like no No. we hate him (laughs) you you don't understand oh anger for this man is immeasurable yes anyway damon has realized laurent's trauma and from this point onward we actually jump to the end of the novel really quickly. Like, I found in my second reading this... Because I can tell where Picard was like, third books and endings are really tough. Mm -hmm. And I can see how in my second reading... It's still good. I still think it's good. But now I can see it does happen, like, fast. It does. I read it so quickly. Mm. And, um... It's not a bad thing. No. I read it quickly. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I I mean, now I think, oh, yeah, that, that probably could be better... But, like, I'm not mad at it. No. I, like, I wouldn't have been mad if it was a little bit longer no, to have either. that. But I also think it's it's still, like, a good ending. It yeah. just, it happens. Like, I know I had to reread some of it a few times because I was like, wait, did this happen? Yeah. Did this actually happen within, yeah. like, two pages? Mm. <laughs> so Damon's walking all the way to the palace in Eos, handing himself in as Damianos. He finds Laurent is standing trial for treason. The regent and Castor sitting on twin thrones, and what do you know? Castor doesn't seem so important anymore. No, Mm-mm. nah. He re- he like the regent outshines <laughs> Castor by a lot. Mm hmm. You like? I think it's really interesting because Damon's been mind has been like mainly on Castor. Yeah. And I think then in that moment he realizes, mm, bitch means nothing. No. It's, the region we have to focus on. Yeah. Which is what Laurent has been thinking about the entire time. Mm-hmm. He's like, Castor in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. Ain't shit. No, he, he <laughs> ain't, ain't shit. shit, bro. Mm-mm. So, yeah, Castor's just some basic bitch now. <laughs> mm-hmm. But seeing the sight of Laurent all dirty and disheveled and the regent making out that Laurent was too scared to say he lay with Damon unwillingly made my blood boil. He he makes it out as if it's this dirty thing. Yeah. And I'm like, how dare you? It's the only true thing he has ever had in his entire fucked up life with you. (laughs) You bitch. You bitch. This whole scene made me so, so angry. Mm -hmm. Like, uh... Yeah, you want to punch a wall. (laughs) Yes, that is the exact feeling. It was either that or I was going to throw the book. Yeah. Which is why, like, in between these, like, parts, I had to send, like, a Snapchat to you because I was so worried. I was like, if I don't get this anger out, I'm going to throw something yeah. and it's 12 a.m. and yeah. my dad is going to be pissed. Mm-hmm. So I was like, we got to break this up somehow. Yep. you got to let out that pent-up exactly. energy. But, um... So I would listen to my angry music and then cry a bit and go back to the Yeah. <laughs> As it goes. As it goes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, oh, that's right. A little boy is sitting beside the regent's throne, and everyone knows his tastes. Yet he's just got too much power. Disgusting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Hundred percent. 
And, like, it's just so unnerving, because he initially obviously had Nikkei's... You can just see, like, the overall power he has. He just uses people. He uses these kids. And no one cares. No one cares. Which In hindsight, they do, but he's too powerful. Yeah. They're like, okay, we'll work with you, because you... we need money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need a livelihood. It's just unfortunate you're the king. Um, but on another note, since you don't know what Damon's planning, it literally just looks like he's ready to die for Laurent, like mm-hmm. Romeo and Juliet style. Yeah. And, and I was ready to die for mm-hmm. him, Romeo and Juliet style. I was beside myself. <laughs> Wait, it's on page 307. This is Damon's whole speech. <laughs> I met this prince, I met the prince of beer. I thought as you did. I didn't know his heart. It was Laurent who said no. I came to, I came to learn it slowly. Damon, don't do this. I came to learn his honesty, his integrity, his strength of mind. Damon! Of course Laurent wanted everything done his own way, but today it was going to be different. I was a fool. Blinded by prejudice. I didn't understand that he was fighting alone. That he had been fighting alone for a very long time. And then I saw the men he commanded, disciplined and loyal. I saw the way his household loved him, because he knew their concerns, cared for their lives. I saw him protect slaves. And when I left him, drugged and without friends after an attack on his life, I saw him stand up in front of his uncle and argue to save my life because he felt he owed me a debt. He knew that it might cost him his life. He knew he'd, been se- he'd be sent to the border to ride into the very same plot to kill him. And he still argued for me. He did it because he was... He, o- he did it because he was owed. Because in the very private code with which he ran his life, it was right. He looked at Laurent, and he understood now what he had not understood then. That Laurent had known who he was that night. Laurent had known who he was and had still protected him, out of a sense of fairness that had somehow survived what had happened to him. That is the man you face. He has more honour and integrity than any man I have ever met. He is dedicated to his people and his country, and I am proud to have been his lover. Oh. And the regent's like, a heartfelt declaration is no evidence. <laughs> so that's so good, honestly. Yeah. But it's almost interesting. It's almost like Damon thinks that Laurent only went into this thinking he was going to die. But yeah. I think he, like, obviously he planned that he was going to get out of it. Mm. Kind of works, kind of doesn't work, but, like, it's... It's, it could have gone so much worse. Oh, it could have. Than it did. Mm. And I feel like it's also partly Damon's fault. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because going into a Verusian court where hearts mean nothing and there has to be tactics and everything, he could have fucked Laurent up completely. Yeah, he could. He so could have. I'm glad he didn't. He could have. <laughs> uh... But yeah, I love how, like, it's like, Damon's like, you don't have all the facts. Mm. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, honey, that's not a fact. <laughs> no, we all knew. And we were all questioning yeah. why. <laughs> why the fuck? Why do you love him? Yeah. Well, how did that happen? Oh, okay. And then we move on to this bit. Which? Because, again, just when you think Laurent has no control in this situation. Bitch change. He brings out Lois, which is Guyon's wife. And, um... Oh, also, you've got, like... Wait, I'll backtrack. Um, but... Damon's also brought witnesses. He's got, like, Nikan, Drostjord, Lazar, Pascal, Lois, and Guyon. And the moment Guyon was called, I knew that bitch was going to betray us. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> There was never a part of me that was like, yeah, he's gonna stand with the Lord. I was like... No, he's flaky. Yeah. He constantly changes sides. 
Honestly, I like Laurent probably threatened him mm. with the exact same thing mm. that the regent did. Exactly. Uh, they both would have threatened to kill their son, mm. uh, kill his son. So mm. it's like, either way, they're gonna end up dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just who's gonna make it worse. Yes. That, that is... would be what he was thinking. Mm. I am upset <laughs> by the fact he didn't use <laughs> Laurent. Nope. But, yeah, just when you think Laurent has no control, he brings Lois out to stand trial, well, to give evidence. And she just details everything Guyon had previously denied mm-hmm. and re- revealed that the regent and Castor were planning, were plotting Theomedes' death alongside his dirty pedophile habits with the lead up to Amrik's suicide. And the counsellors don't like it that a son of the counsellor was subject to that treatment. But that's not enough. Laurent's name isn't cleared. But Pascal, my man, came through. (laughs) Oh, he brings that letter. And he says, the last words of my brother, the archer Lundgren, carried by the soldier called Gravar and stolen by the regent's pet Nikes, who was killed for it. This is the testimony of the dead. So, basically, not only is the regent a pedophile, but a fratricidal asshole like Castor. At the Battle of Marlas, the regent set up the king Aleron's death by luring him out onto the field, presumably more safe than being inside the fort. He hears the news that Auguste has been killed, takes off his helmet, no longer feeling careful, and is shot in the throat by Pascal's brother, who was promised gold, and in turn is killed by Govar, who has been enjoying his stolen luxury all these years, knowing the truth of everything. And that's the shit that he was able to hold over the regent this entire time, Mm. including with Nikkei's. Although I still can't fully piece together how Nikkei's was involved. I know he was, but I can't make sense okay. in my brain. Yeah. Not yet. I'll probably have to reread it a few, a few times to <laughs> really get it. But he was involved. And that is why he died. But with that, Heraday, God bless him, God bless him, I love this moment, comes forward to Laurent and says, we were here to hold the throne in trust and we failed you my king and it's the first time the run is in it. and he kneels <laughs> I was screaming finally our poor boy gets recognized he needs <laughs> what he deserves and from there it's so satisfying it's like a ripple effect yes. like they all slowly bow to him and, and he ha- everything just feels so good you feel mm. like him in that moment You're yeah like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been <laughs> turned out good. <laughs> I've been fighting for this <laughs> my whole life. I haven't left my room, but I've been fighting for yes. it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and all the counselors slowly come and stand by Laurent until he has a whole army behind him, and the regent has absolutely no one. Good bitch, die! Yes. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, I was, I was. Oh. It makes the anger at dealing with the regent for three books so worth it. it just it to does. have these like few pages where mm. everything just gets turned on him, and uh, you're like, you deserve worse, but you can get a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> the truth is revealed. Yeah. Oh, uh, and oh, okay. I gotta read the the, the end of page three twenty four. Get this feeling. Get it all out. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm never going to be prepared. <laughs> mm. The regent says, The counselor has been deceived into treason. Take them. There was a pause in which his order ought to have been followed, but wasn't. The regent turned. The hall was thick with his soldiers. The regent's guard, trained to his orders and brought here to do his bidding. None of them moved. In the strange silence, a soldier stepped forward. You're not my king, he said. Pulling the regent's insignia from his shoulder, he, he dropped it at the regent's feet. 
Then he crossed the hall as the council had done to stand beside Laurent. His movement was the first drop that became a trickle, then flowed as another soldier pulled his insignia from his shoulder and crossed, and another, and another. And then, like a tide drawing away from the rock, the Baritians crossed the hall until the regent, regent stood alone, and Laurent stood facing him with an army at his back. Herodet, said the regent, this is the boy who has shirked his duties, who has never worked for anything in his life, who is every way unfit to rule this country. Herodet said, he is our king. He is not a king, he is more, no more than a... You've lost. Laurent's calm words cut across his uncles. <laughs> oh, finally, because I also noticed, like, the regent always cut Laurent off. Yes. But bitch, not today. It was good to have him get cut off. Finally. And then it says, He stood free. His uncle's soldiers had released him, striking the irons from his wrists across across from him. The regent stood exposed, a middle-aged man used to commanding public spectacle. Now, with it turned against him. God. The regent said, This is absurd. You have committed the crime of treason. You will be put to the sword. You will not be interred with your father or your brother. Your body will be displayed instead on the city gates as a warning against treachery. You can't sentence me. The regent said, I am the king. I always think of that line from Game of Thrones where it's um, Tywin. I think, yeah, Lord Tywin. He's like, anyone who says I am the king is no true king. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, It's Bitch. like a last minute kind of cling. Yep. Bitch, you ain't king. Nope. Um, Thank God. Oh my God. And the regent then says, You think you can defy me? To Laurent. You think you can rule via you? Laurent said, I am not a boy anymore. As the soldiers took him, the regent laughed a little breathlessly. You've forgotten, said the regent, that if you touch me, I will kill Damianus' oh, child. No. no, said Damon, you won't. And then... Oh, that's right. And then it also says, um, it's got, like, your cast's little yeah, note. about the child. Not being... And it's bittersweet. I really liked that. But then Laurent says, taken. And I love how we literally don't see the regent getting... Like, it's... He just disappears mm. and dies off screen, basically. Yeah. And I think that's very fitting, because... After all this time, he's had so much power. Yeah. It's like, nah, take, take it, it away. away. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Mm-hmm. Get rid of that bitch. And I know, I know some people are like, like, they're kind of disappointed because, oh, we wanted to see him stuff out. But it's like, mmm. He suffered by losing all his power in yeah. that scene. That's what I think. Yeah. I'm okay, because Castor is in the book, and mm. it's both of them taking him down. Yeah. Which... I prefer more than if they'd done that to the region. Yeah. Because in Damon's mind, Castor had been the villain for so long. Oh, yeah. So it's good to see them both taking him down. Mm. Instead of it being... It's like it's kind of like Laurent coming to meet Damon instead yeah. of it being Damon coming to meet Laurent. It's, it comes full circle. Yeah. It's like a brother for a brother. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, again, amazing. <laughs> um, well thought out. Yes. But... Um, like, because I initially thought that Damon, I was expecting a big showdown between Damon and Castor, but mm. I'm not, I'm not not mad. No. Yeah. I'm not mad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mad at it, because I think the way it turned out was overall much more satisfying, mm-hmm. as you said. To see him and Laurent work together. Mm-hmm to beat the shit out of the person that started this all yes it's phenomenal it is and like when I think about it now between Damon and Castor Damon was never gonna be able to kill Castor no he always loved his brother he cared too much he cared way too much Laurent had the I don't care about this guy to kill him yeah he was like no dumb man us you do not see Mm -hmm. (laughs) he does not love you as you love him and so (laughs) he used and ironically he uses the slave cuff 
to chain Damon to the wall so Damon doesn't get up and continue to hurt himself because he's been yeah. stabbed and he's like bleeding out. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's like, world's like, please stop. Mm. I'd like to actually be with you, not have you dead. Yes. <laughs> I've already had enough of that in my yeah. life. <laughs> I, I can't just look after you for so long and then you die on me. Mm-hmm. Now Laurent was beside him, aloof, untouchable Laurent was beside him, kneeling, oh that's right, kneeling on the wet marble, <laughs> hundreds of miles from home, with nothing in his eyes but Damon. There's a lot of blood, said da- Laurent. Luckily, da- said Damon, I brought a physician. It hurt to talk. Laurent let out a breath of strange airless sound. He, was, he saw an expression in Laurent's eyes that he remembered from his own. Laurent didn't flinch from it. I killed your brother. I know. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Damon, <laughs> Damon said it and felt a strange empathy pass between them as if they knew each other for the first time. He looked into Laurent's eyes and he felt himself understood. Even as he understood Laurent. They were both orphans now, without family. The symmetry that ruled both their lives had brought them here at the end of their journey. Laurent said, Our men have the gates and the hill halls. Eos is yours. And you, said Damon, with your uncle gone, there won't be resistance. You have Veer. Laurent went, was very still, and the moment seemed to draw out the space between them private in a hushed, in the hushed bars. And the centre... We hold the centre, said Laurent. And then, it was one kingdom once. Yes! <laughs> that is him being like, you're my husband now. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and I'm not mad. <laughs> no. Be happy. And Damon's like, and, and that's right, Laurent, Laurent wasn't looking at him when he said it. And it was a long moment before he lifted his eyes to Damon's waiting ones, and Damon's breath caught at what he was, what he saw there. The odd shyness of it, as though Laurent was asking instead of answering. Yes, said Damon, feeling light-headed at the question. Like that. Him saying yes. And he's <laughs> just like, yes. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, married, been. it's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is basically implying. Yes. And then, of course... And then they roll together, and it's great. <laughs> The short stories. <laughs> Boom. Beat. And that is the end of the Captain Prince trilogy. <laughs> so much heartache. I know. <laughs> so much heartache and it finally pays off. Yes. <laughs> oh. But, yes, as I said before, the short stories are after it. But, um. Which I have not read. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tyler has not read them, know, but so but, but I have. So I have like seven other books that I need. Yeah, to read, I'm so bad. Mm. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh-huh. That to be read list. She's getting longer. <laughs> she is. It never stops. Nope. But nope. yeah, I'm gonna miss like like this series in the in like in terms of reading it for the first time. Yeah. Because there's nothing like it. It's one of those books you wish you could read again without mm-hmm. knowing anything about... Well, maybe knowing some things about yeah. it. Yeah. For trigger warnings. Yeah. But it... Like, going into it, not knowing how it ends. Mm. Not knowing the region's plans. Not knowing all Ron's plans. No. Damien doesn't... Damon doesn't have any plans, but not knowing his <laughs> plans either. <laughs> it, it would be so... Lovely to mm. read again. Oh yeah. Without knowing. Mm. Like I have, I after like rereading the entire series for the second time, I have a newfound appreciation for the first book. Because mm. initially, I, I read the whole series the first time, and I was like, "King's Rising" is my favorite. It still is my favorite, but now, I think like the first book, there's just something about the fact that first book that I really appreciate more in I the think second if, read. If it if that ha- book hadn't been so slow burn and mm-hmm. world building King's Rising would have not been the same No, because you see their relationship at it's most hostile oh, you at do. the start you do and so you 
like to see it change is amazing. It is. Like Laurent's redemption redemption arc is one of the best I've seen, period. Mm-hmm. Like I know like whenever there's a piece of fiction, it all comes down to like well people are always gonna read it differently yeah. and you can't convince everyone. No. But oh my god. <laughs> you convinced me. <laughs> you convinced me, Picard. <laughs> oh jeez. I like I can't wait for like the next book series that she brings out. I don't think it will be. It definitely won't be the same level because nothing will be. No, nothing will be. But it's it's also YA, and that that has me concerned, concerned because I'm like, oh no, she's gonna have to like not do harsher reality type things. But Topics kind of stuff. Yeah, but if I hope she can weave her magic into it and like hook me because. I need a different hit of that, that <laughs> of this entire trilogy because it's just completely ruined my taste, but in a good way. So thank you guys for joining me on this epic journey of this trilogy. And thank you, Tyler, for joining me as well. We'll have to get her back on another time when, <laughs> whenever I read another book series that I want to talk about and she just so happens to read it but uh, I'm so happy you guys came along and even if you're someone who's read the whole entire trilogy and you just came here because you're like want to talk about it that is great too but um I love introducing people to this series because I'm like it's either going to be one of the best things they've read <laughs> or it's going to be one of the worst things they've read so yeah, but let me know your guys' thoughts and feelings. And once again, I will remind you, there is a YouTube video where you can comment. So feel free to do that or you can email me again. But yeah, so I don't know. I don't plan to read another book series just quite yet. I think the next time I'll post another episode will be when I've discovered a new series that has hooked me just as much as this one has. So, yeah, but for now, I will see you guys whenever I see you guys. (laughs) So thank you for listening, and I hope you guys have a great day slash evening slash morning. (laughs) Bye!